Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode number five. I believe so. Episode number five. I'm Victor Johansson, along with Josiah Showstrom and Francisco Corrales in the engineering hello, room. Hello. Today, we have Luis Hermancio. Cio. Hermancio. Hermancio? No, you, you added like an N in there. It's Hermosillo. Yeah, yeah, there you I, go. Yeah, because that's how you're spelled in my phone with an N, and then oh, I just changed it. Okay, okay. <laughs> I did some deep, deep digging onto you yeah. uh, today and yesterday, so it I changed the spelling. Was that hard spelling. to find how his name was spelled, huh? Yeah. Dang. And everything about him. Despite that, his I know brand him. and <laughs> his website Did domain. you find any, anything bad? Uh, no, <laughs> I'll give you permission to share it. Because like, I, I feel like... Like, I'm curious because I'm like, I don't know what's out there, you know? All I looked up was your Instagram and Facebook. And oh. that at I don't this know if point, you just Googled it. I know you in person, so it's a little bit easier to be able mm. to, you know, I don't have to go full on research. But yeah. um, you have been a photographer, a wedding photographer and lifestyle, lifestyle photographer for how many years? Like about a decade. Ten uh, years in the Rockford track, area. Yeah, around there, yeah. And you grew, up, you grew up here as well. Yeah, born and raised in Rockford. So yeah. I'm curious, what kind of started this whole journey into photography? You know, I'm always fascinated with people's kind of origin stories of mm. why did they get into, you know, video? Why did they get into photo? Was it was it something that you just kind of, you knew you were creative and you wanted to get that out? Or did you remember picking up a camera for the first time and then it just like progressed from there? Well, what's that origin story of Luis Hermosillo? Oh, man. Um, I, well, I did know that I was always a, a creative. I was always into, in, in, but more into like the, like, uh, like digital, I guess, kind of creating like mm. cameras, you know, photography, video, uh, actually music was my first kind of nerdy thing mm. that I was always into, um, uh, for, a, for a good, like a good portion of my life. I, as a kid, I wanted to be a DJ, oh, okay. like I wanted to be a DJ. I went through like a beat making phase. Back in the day when like people were, I don't know, people still use Fruity, Fruity Loops and stuff like that. I've never heard of yeah, it. Yeah, Fruity, uh, Fruity Loops, I think that's what it was called. I've heard of Fruit Loops. It's yeah. really tasty. <laughs> yeah, very good cereal too, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I would make beats on there and uh, yeah, just for, just for fun. I try to like replicate some of like some hip hop beats, beats that I would hear and I would mm. just play around with it. It's just like a software to make beats. Uh, I'm pretty sure it might still be around. Uh, back in the day, it wasn't even for Mac. It was just for Windows. But anyway, started off with music. I played in Mexican bands with my grandpa. Okay. Um, Accordion back no, then as well? No, or no, else? no. That was just percussion. So I was like the the kid that would add like the like the extra like little sounds and songs. So if it was like a romantic song, I'd add like that like rain chime in there. Like, <laughs> mm. Yeah, and then it, like the guitar would come in and stuff like that or whatever. Um but yeah, no, I played like the uh, the congas, like the I don't mm. know if that's what you call them. So it's yeah. like, you know, it was like, so um, so that's what I would play, and I did that. I think I was like five, six around there. Oh wow! Um, just like parties, like quinceañeras, and like sweet sixteen or su sweet fifteen, um, and stuff like that. So it was music first, and I was always into like anime and like drawing, like Dragon Ball Z and mm. stuff. So that all that creative stuff. Um, then later on, I think I grew up in like I grew up around like in it was like like when I was like I think maybe like ten or twelve or something like that. Uh, I asked my mom for a uh, like a video camera, mm. and because uh, I've always wanted to film things uh, that I was doing. And back in the day, in that time, it was when that show uh, with Johnny Knoxville. I don't want to say the name to keep this PG, but you know they were doing stunts and and just dumb things oh, and recording, yeah. Okay, okay. yeah. And uh, Jack, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, Jack in the Box one, yeah, <laughs> the Jack uh, Donkey, <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, the Donkey Show. Um, I think we could say that word. Yeah, Joe. I it, think that one's it was when Jackass. Yeah, 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 it was when Jackass. Jackass. It was okay. when Jackass came. I was like a huge fan of that. Like I just loved like the, the just the rawness of like the filming. And uh, I remember got the the camera before. So actually, I would say that I was drawn more to video before, like at first. Mm -hmm. um, and then I would film. I would be the kid that would like be filming like my cousin, like doing some stunts or something, like jumping off like the garage or, or just dumb things like yeah, that. You know, yeah. not as crazy as like Jackass, but uh, I would just film stuff like that. And and then we try to like make movies and stuff yeah. like just home videos. Uh, 
And then, it, or, then like a couple of years went by, and I got a, like a newer camera, and it was back when it was like the little cassettes. It yeah. almost looked like a VHS, but it wasn't. It was like smaller. Mini VHS. Oh yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Mini yeah. yeah I like worked that. with yeah, that yeah, one yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I never, <laughs> I could only watch them because I, I would have to like plug in the camera to the TV to watch the video. Oh yeah, um, yeah. So it didn't have a monitor on the camera. Uh, I don't remember. No, it was like. It had like the little flip out like viewfinder. Oh no, kidding! Okay, uh, okay. Yeah, and it was just like a cassette. And it was when they made them like small at first. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Uh, so that was like my first, I think, interaction with a camera. Uh, and like I said, I I can't. I'm horrible with timeline, but I know it was like before I had moved uh, to Michigan to live with my dad for a little while. I just grew up with my mom, so uh, it had to have been like ten between twenty and ten and twelve. Hmm. Uh, that was my first time with a camera. It was video, just recording, just random stuff. Um, yeah. And then I dropped it for a while, pursued, went back to being a DJ and mm. um, bought, the, bought like a whole controller and everything and like a computer. Of and I was like did. mixing. And yeah. I, I was the kid. Nothing less. Yeah. Then I was the kid at, in high school or middle school that was like burning CDs and, and selling them like pirate, mm. like just pirating like Pirate Bay, <laughs> like Torrance and st- like <laughs> making money. <laughs> I had to I was cut like, out this whole section so yeah. you didn't get arrested on the uh, way out the door. But the like, entrepreneurial <laughs> spirit was yeah. still within oh, you. It was always there, it, man. Who, anyone who knows Luis, they know how entrepreneurial he is and just always willing to uh, work very hard to yeah. get something done and then also try unique and new things. So it's funny that that even showed up when you were you know, so young. It's It's weird because now that I'm talking about it, I never realized it until now, today, right here. So, yeah. And before that, I actually... This is a fresh revelation. Yeah, You're I, getting to share with us. I also right do here. therapy on the side. So yeah. if you yeah. want to connect later. Some of that. <laughs> Talking about therapy. It was funny. Uh, <laughs> the uh, uh, Just to touch a little quick on the entrepreneur, entrepreneurial thing without going into a crazy bunny trail. Um, but the before even that the whole piracy thing phase of my life where i would just burn cds and stuff and i got all legit. we've all been there dude i got like really <laughs> legit with it like i would actually print like i bought the stickers and i would like make my own covers and like put them on the cd and made boxes with it and like everything like i try to make it like really high quality and i would get like requests from people like give me 10 songs and i'll burn you a cd and like i was just making like these like super cool like mixtapes for people that's cool <laughs> um and now i see they would be like the the like DJ and then like it'd have like watermarks <laughs> in them. Yeah, no, it'd have like watermarks like like 97 oh, ZOK. Yeah, yeah, and it was yeah, like yeah. super like yeah. yeah. Like speaking of watermarks, do you remember the old DVDs that they would um they would have they would play this thing in the beginning of you wouldn't steal a car. <laughs> You wouldn't, uh, you know, whatever oh, yeah. it wasn't going yeah. to a list Theft of two, yeah, yeah. yeah, like a big one. Pirating sign. is yeah. <laughs> pirating is stealing too, or something like that. Do, they funny. don't even do that anymore, right? Like they're just kind of because everything's like the streaming. campaign was so effective. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I remember thinking when I was young, though, it did get me because I was like, yeah, oh no, because I know we would have a the cops are gonna find me. We had a family VHS thing that would like tape shows onto a VHS from live. Yeah, from okay. like live TV and tape it so we could watch it back later. I think it was something like that. So I remember yeah. being, I was remember yeah. Yeah, getting pretty nervous about that. <laughs> the predecessor yeah. to DVR. That's how they justified DVR. Yeah. Oh, that's a good point. I never thought about that. Yeah. yeah. But it's funny that your entrepreneurial spirit was already kind of present at that point. You, yeah. You, you wanted to make money and but the first found out a way to do it. The first one before that piracy, I was actually selling like. There is this chili powder before, like nowadays it's called tahine. It's like a chili powder yeah. that like, you know, but well, before tahine, there was Lucas and Lucas was like, Kiko probably knows Lucas. Like, come on, man. You know, Lucas, Lucas. is a household name. Yeah. 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 Lu- yeah. Lu- and, and Lucas, heard of it. Lucas was like this little uh, chili powder with a little like duck in it. Um, and mm. if Francisco finds like a like a Google like Lucas chili powder Mexican, like it's like a little yellow. Yeah. Can uh, you little, bring that up? Little Kiko? salt. Ch- yeah. When he finds it. But um I, I am totally in the dark on this, so I'm curious. I, so it's just like <laughs> chili powder. Is yeah, this like, a it Mexican? Yeah, Mex- yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I know it's Mexican like, to what, yeah, yeah. Is it very it, similar it's to tahine? It, it was, seriously, it was like tahine, but like the, before tahine, the brand came out. Okay. So it was the exact same thing, but like in a little in a little you know little yellow cylinder thing that like was like a salt shaker and it, it we would just eat it we would just put it in our hand and lick it like mexican kids would do that so i assume and you found some entrepreneurial way to like so make yes some money off this. but but i sold it in like a weird way so i at the time there was a soap opera called um uh soñadoras which means dreamers 
uh drink, like and and so they had like it was like a bunch of teenagers and stuff like that and like okay. partying and like it was a soap opera but it was like a mexican soap opera so there it was like it was pretty bad and there was like a drug stuff there and like i was watching these like you know growing up because that's what my family was watching yeah and there was like a guy that was selling drugs and they were coming like these little packages and i remember seeing it being powder so i was like oh cool and i didn't think anything of it so i literally <laughs> bought up uh, i told my mom to buy me like lucas and then i would put it in like i grabbed my notebook and i would sprinkle like some of it and then fold it and then i would put a price tag on it like 50 cents a dollar and then i would go in at school uh in the like um i gotta mention the school i bet uh i would go in the i was in the, it was weird because i knew i wasn't supposed to do this but i would go in the uh the tube slide the little tube oh, slide, yeah and i would be hiding in oh, the middle there it is ah. yeah no, that's like the tamarindo one it's like the powder the powder is like a cylinder yellow but that's the brand that's yeah. the brand you, yeah, can, but that's you the brand. can also open up google kiko yeah oh it's surely where he found it but uh, unless we just happen to have a photo yeah, of that on the I computer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah have you been on our computer but i was selling i was selling that like i was selling that to like yeah uh yep that's it like the yellow ones like okay yeah they oh they changed the labeling but yeah they don't even but have any is, of the old school ones but is this a spice yeah it's just a spice but you could it's sweet it's like a lime oh there it is the, spice, the, sort of. the, the yellow green and red on uh, the, the the go keep going this way uh keep, yep keep going keep going up 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 second row First picture, second row, up there, up, 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 up. Yep, right there, that one. Uh, that was that's like the original that's the, packaging. So that's that like super so hot. Or? Like the red one is super hot. The yellow one was like the most common one, and then the green one was just like lime. Like it was straight up lime. So why uh, why would these kids buy that? Buy it from you? Well, Mexican candy is like a lot of it's spicy, right? Like yeah, it's like spicy, like tamarindo and stuff. But that one didn't have tamarindo in it. But anyways. I would, yeah, I made these little packages and I took them all to school with my notebook paper and, and I didn't have any. them in the slide. And I would go the in the slide can. and hide where like teachers couldn't see me. So okay. the kid would go down the slide. I would pop, fr fr freeze them right in the middle of the slide and I'd be like, hey, you want some of this candy? <laughs> and they would give me their money and then I would get the money because at You're the like time. Like a slide troll. It's like, so I was selling this candy because I wanted to get like I never got fast food growing up. Like it was very rare that I would we would like order pizza and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Uh, and so I they would bring like Pizza Hut on Wednesdays or Papa John's at well, it was I think it was Pizza Hut back in back in the day. And uh, I wanted an extra slice, and it was like a dollar to get an extra slice. So that's why I would do that. Uh, but I was doing it really young. That's so funny, dude. Or that's why I love origin stories because yeah. it, it like <laughs> gives you. I'm I'm so fascinated by like mm -hmm. why you know that's why I ask these questions like why did you start out doing this? It, once you get to hear kind of how they start, how a person mm -hmm. started, and their kind of uh, mindset in the beginning, it like puts a perspective, a frame on kind of who they are now. You yeah. know what I mean? Because because yeah. you're a very entrepreneurial guy and mm -hmm. you're always I mean, you know, we've sat down and you've showed me your systemization of, um, you know, all the different things you do. And it's cool to get that perspective now of seeing you as a kid and already having that entrepreneurial spirit in you. Yeah. So, so how did you get from there, though? Yeah. How you when were, you're selling this drug, basically. Yes. Yeah, like, <laughs> <kid>, like a <laughs> little kid, kid. Yeah. A little in candy. Yeah, yeah. School. Yeah. That was uh, a sign of your early entrepreneurialism. And then at some point you like, I'm going to make money off of creative stuff. Yeah. Then I got cre a little creative with the CDs and music because music was like a passion of mine. But I was like, how do I like. I was the first one of the well, probably second or uh, like in a group of my friends that ended up getting a computer with like a DVD burner. Mm. Like if you had a mm. CD burner, that was cool. But then if you had the DVD burner, yeah, that was next level. It was like next level. So um, I was burning like music videos too mm. and all kinds of stuff that I could download. From DVD Florence. minus R plus R. <laughs> Everything. Plus yeah, yeah, that's oh, minus that's right. plus plus. Oh like double la Dual layer. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. And I would go the to cops Walgreens. Are here, by the way, uh, they're asking for some. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shoot. Really oh, my gosh. I can literally we'll get picture myself sweated. standing like, at Walmart and trying to figure out which one to get the R, the minus R, the plus R. <laughs> yeah. I, and I oh, never knew. Under, one of them was like rewritable. Yeah. Yes. Oh, that was. That's what yeah, it was. RW, yeah. Yep. I bought those all the time. So, and then the colorful frames always for the actual CD. Mm -hmm. I would always yeah. buy those. The Jewel cases. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So I had all the colored full ones. And the the thing was that like most of my friends would ask for like like their parents probably for like I don't know maybe a video game or maybe something yeah. else like a toy or something. And I would ask my mom to take me to Walgreens to go buy more CDs. That was my thing. Like yeah. I was never really into toys. 
Yeah, I was never into like toys and playing like remote control. Cars. Like no toys growing up. Like really, it, my thing was mm. like either video games or or like music and mm. electronics. I used to like pull apart like um, like boom boxes and just like yeah. um, all that stuff and like try to fix recorders and all kinds of nerdy stuff like that. See, that's why I think creative business owners are just a different breed of we, people we are we're, we're, we are we're weird you know even yeah. as kids yeah <laughs> we're weird it's like why is this kid riding his bike picking up old speakers yeah and i would just go home and open them up and like just oh there's like a cable that came on saturday and i would like re-put it back together with yeah. tape and it would work and now i had a boom box in my, with in my tape that's awesome yeah with tape <laughs> who needs I didn't to know, solder yeah well i didn't know how to solder but i would just notice that if i made contact it would work i, I did mean, burn a few things but as yeah. a kid i i wanted to i was doing this thing of um, redoing Lord of the Rings clips because I love those movies. So I would basically refilm them in my own way just for like practice and like show them to my friends. And I needed weaponry. So I decided to build my own forge in my backyard. What child doesn't need weaponry? Right. Right. <laughs> and I, I knew, I found out that real metal, like uh, steel, was way too, uh, you needed high temperature, right? And then I found the out. The melting point was. <laughs> yeah. 2000 plus more than you're capable of but then i saw i figured out lead melted a lot easier so my dad had these highline poles because he worked for an electrical cooperative i took those off i melted the ends off and then i made like a whole knife thing a whole knife uh what do you call them the the um it's like a you pour the liquid into it it's like a mold mold. mold, yeah a mold out of sand so i'd made my own knife Wow. For the Lord of the Rings clips. <laughs> so wow. this like the weird things we do that are very unusual. My yeah. my mom thought I was unusual. I know my brother thought I was unusual, and I'm sure it's the same for you. But yeah, yeah. so going from that, how did you start in photography? Because you've been doing that for a long time. Yeah. So uh then I just kind of stopped. I kind of uh I dropped out of school when I was like 14 years old. Okay. Um, wow. So I don't have GD. I don't have GD. I don't have no high school. Mm. I last grade completed was eighth grade. And then I went for my freshman year, and that year I didn't even count because I, I was skipping school. I wasn't doing anything mm. really nothing i wasn't doing anything bad i just wasn't going to school what? i wasn't paying attention anymore was school just not for you you felt or? yeah i always uh and i always just like i don't know i was never like a i don't know i sometimes i say i wasn't but like when i want to learn something i'll sit down and read a mm-hmm. book and like yeah watch and submerge all this like knowledge and but like i don't know i just i i think part of it was like i just didn't have like the motivation behind me just like family background and stuff like that i just didn't have sure. like that motivation behind me and so i was just like well what am i doing this for you know? yeah like um so, uh, so I just how kinda... many times have uh potential clients asked you for uh, your yeah. diploma or your degree mm, i'm never actually never, yeah. exactly yeah, yeah. <laughs> i think I, th- I will say i will confess that at the beginning um uh, that was something that um which i feel like I, i'm getting ahead of myself but I, at the beginning i uh I I was kind of I it was one of those things that I kind of was embarrassed of like saying that yeah. I didn't graduate. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie. I I I would lie about my I, I would just say like people was like my couples would say oh like what school did you graduate from and I would just be like Jefferson High School because that's where I went to. Mm-hmm. Um, but I never graduated. You know. Yeah. And that was earlier in my career. I think uh, you know, and it took me a while to really like be like. No, I just got to be honest. And like, I didn't, you know. But that's another really common thing, too, because I know I felt felt it, too. I felt the same way because I I was terrible in school. I just, I couldn't sit through the classes. My mind would wander all the time. I I just, I knew it wasn't for me and I was just doing it to get by. And I knew that film was my future. So I had that same thing of just kind of being embarrassed of like feeling like I wasn't smart. And then I actually started running my own business and started to talk with people and get projects and actually convince people, you know, when you're 18 and you convince a 45 year old at a company to spend money with you, yeah, you know, like that's, that's kind of a big deal. That's, that's not a, the reality is like, it doesn't stop at like you're graduating high school either. Like, right. I went on and I completed an associate's degree, you know, at college, but yeah, even then, like, I remember a period of time where like, well, all my friends were going on to get bachelors. It's like, well, Why didn't you get your bachelor's? Then you get your bachelor's. And like, well, why didn't you get your master's? Why didn't you get a PhD? Why do you only have one PhD? It's like, it never ends. There's always yeah. someone who has more degrees or more, you know, qualifications, yeah. you know, so yeah. to speak, than you do. But yeah. And but, this, but this is an industry that respects skills and uh, yeah. taste. Yeah. And yeah. you've got both. So, which is cool. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> it but worked out. <laughs> with the, uh, 
so I kind of just dropped everything, you know, back to the, the, the question of how I got into the mm -hmm. photography. So obviously the creative stuff when I was little, the music, the entrepreneur stuff, <laughs> selling candy, selling pirated CDs, all that <laughs> stuff. Um, then, uh, you know, it just stopped from like 14, dropped out of school, got my first job at B for Roo, um, mm. Great place. When I was 16, I was like literally my first, like one day I just woke up and I was like, you know what? Like I, I kind of need a job. And then ended up like, that was the first time I actually applied. How old were you? Uh, like 16. 16. Okay. Uh, like at 16. Yeah. Turn, barely turning 16, I think. Okay. Uh, and uh, I ended up applying to b for and it was like the first place I have applied. And literally the manager came out and was like, can you start tomorrow? And I was like, yeah. Or something like that. It was like <laughs> within a couple of days. And uh, yeah. And then I went and bought black pants, black shoes and showed up and, uh, I sucked the first day really bad, got in trouble a couple times and oh, yelled really? at, and I was like, oh, this sucks. But I, I stuck it through and then uh, then met my wife there at for a year later. Oh, okay. Um, and then we got married at when we were like uh, 20, 20, 21 years old, around there. Uh, yeah, 2011. And uh, we had, I was just talking to my wife about this last night, and she's like, do you remember... She was like, make sure you get your timeline right. I was like, I'm going to try. So I know she's going to watch this and be like, <laughs> when's your <laughs> anniversary? And uh, Dude, timelines uh, are not what's my thing you actually Oh, my and... gosh. Like, I can't. Even, I don't even know what I'm going to do tomorrow. You know, it's yeah. like I have to look at things. But um, but she told me, and I remember this, uh, we had like $400 in our, to our name. Like, we just got married in an mm. apartment. Like, we were both working at Beefaroo. We we're like 20 years old and we have our first apartment and everything. And, you know, I was only make a minimum wage and, yeah. and all that stuff. And so we had like 400 bucks in our account. And she's like, remember when you were like, I want to buy a camera and like do photography. And, and, then, you know, wow. she's just like, let's do it. And that was literally like all of our money. We was only this the, the D90 then? Was that what? Was it was that the D. Earlier? Yeah, no, it was the. It was some Nikon thing. I remember. D700. D700. Full frame. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm. Full frame. And the only reason I got it was because. So my cousin Jose was doing photography, and actually Kiko was doing photography a little bit before me, uh, yeah. with with friend, with my cousin. Yeah, we kind of linked up and started doing it, but you kind of took off completely from us. You you were like skyrocketed from it, like you you were so much better than us. Uh, I uh, yeah. So my uh, Kiko, you, know, you downplay yourself as well. Though. Yeah, he, he's he's awesome. Yes, he um, thank you. So. He, uh, my cousin, they were taking pictures of like, at the time, like Kiko was like, had like all these sports bikes with his brothers and his friends. And, uh, I remember like, I just like, I looked up to my cousin. He was like, Kiko and my cousin were like, uh, they were like the guys that I looked up to, like mm. my, my big brother is almost, I'm the oldest out of all my siblings. So I was like, I didn't have like a big brother. Mm. Uh, my mm -hmm. dad was like kind of in and out and stuff. So, uh, I, uh, they were doing photography. So I was like, I, I want to do it too. And I just like got that camera with the, that the amount of money and started taking pictures of people. And that's when I started realizing like, whoa, this is like really cool. And I've always was drawing to it and like, but more video that what happened was that obviously like, you know, what, 12 years ago or 13 years ago, however, um, like photography was always like there, there wasn't like, you couldn't just upload a, a full HD video on, on, on Facebook, mm -hmm. you know, isn't yeah. that crazy? Like, yeah. Even just how yeah. far like social media has come now with the yeah. reels, with like how like video editing skills, like video editing, uh, like um, options you have now on an app, like it's crazy. There's no way to really even learn it. I mean, uh, 2011, yeah. I think it was really starting to come out, but we were talking to Neil about that yeah. as well. Uh, we had him on last there week. There was really no YouTube university. No, no, no there no. wasn't. So yeah, so photography obviously took off first. I started just taking pictures of people and posting them up on mm. Facebook, and then people were like, oh like how much would you would it be for like my family and i was like i did a bunch of just free work for like a couple of years um just oh, so wow. as a witness to at, some of that work yeah i knew Luis at the time we were good buddies yeah we, I, I guess we could kind of freshly got to know know each other right yeah. around that time we were yep. set part of the same bible study group. yeah bible study group yeah mm -hmm. but like the i mean i remember that camera and i remember one yeah. of, a couple of the first pictures you took i'm like well, oh my gosh keep working at it bro <laughs> yeah dude it was i like, was never a f photographer really yeah. but I, I, well, you had a lot I more experience it wasn't, than i do it yeah. wasn't great no know? no but i'm like i still yeah, have stick at it and yeah actually if you go on my facebook and go all the way back you'll find some if you oh, go to man. my profile pictures on <laughs> facebook like i tried to delete them but i was like I think Facebook was like, no, these are staying here. I was like, what the heck? Is that <laughs> these are a permanent part of history. <laughs> yeah. Um, it wouldn't take them down? I Maybe I just, like, you know, Facebook makes it so difficult it's to delete. Really like, tough to, like, like, you're mm. just like, us. Oh, screw it. Like, even if you wanted to, like, right now, if you wanted to empty out, like, your inbox from, like, 
10 years ago and you still had the same profile, like it, you literally have to go to the exact chat message and delete it message. And message by message. There's yeah. no like select all and delete. They used to have it and then they just yeah. deleted it. Now I think it's just to collect more information. Yeah, I did that a few years ago on my Facebook. Like, I'm like I, I mean, it used to be kind of a personal thing. Like I only yeah. use Facebook for business now, but I yeah. painstakingly went through, I don't remember yeah. how long it took me, but just like trying to delete all the personal yeah. stuff off my page. You know? Yep. Mm-hmm. Kinda, same, same thing. But yeah. um, they don't make it easy. That then that's when it it, it took off. Like that's, my wife t- trusted me, and yeah, that's amazing that mm. your wife had that um, faith in you. And yeah. I think, I think for you know, and that you've shared with me at times where your wife has kind of put her trust in you as oh, yeah. well. And it's like our wives are the unseen heroes of the yeah, businesses. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it, it it adds a lot. It it really, I think, pushes you to become better in those circumstances when someone believes you and takes that risk yeah <clears throat> excuse me and takes that risk of spending all your money that you have yeah on a camera yeah was that actually 400 the, the camera yeah, was about that's 400 dollars yeah. it was like well it actually it was the d3100 so it was a kit one okay the, then i upgraded the later on to the d700 which was full frame so it was a D30, mm. D3100. I was going to say, to get a camera for it, 400 bucks. No, it was like that. You know, like the starter, like the the, the, the Canons had the, the Canon had the the Rebels, like the 3TI, yeah, 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 yeah. whatever. And those were like around like four or 500 bucks. And it was like with the kit lens. And mm. like we were talking about video like lenses 10 years of cameras. inflation ago, too. So yeah, like true that. Worth yeah. Money. So yeah. I'm, I'm pretty Good sure point. those kit cameras are like almost a thousand now yeah. or 800. Wow. Um, but yeah, they were like. 500 like 499 or something and, and that's s- what i got and so then you, did you work at bifru for a while i mean like you didn't do full-time photography two no, years after I, it was just like oh here little, we go there it is that's that's what i got Look that's the package that. what's uh, the price for that the d3100 like yeah, it's, it, it. they don't even sell it anymore but that's that was my first camera and they, i got it because my cousin had the d3000 and then the three d3100 was like the newer version mm. um but uh yeah i just i was doing it as a hobby okay. and still doing music actually i had like a whole dj controller like the whole macbook and mm. like i was still like mixing in my bedroom i had like a whole did you get hired out for that too or um no i never did okay, no okay. i never like pushed it to like as like trying to get gigs or anything like that and um because of, i was and i started like really switching my attention more towards the photography mm. uh and i started getting like little gigs with my dj friends like at bars and clubs and stuff yeah. in Chicago, like, hey, can I just go and shoot you like DJing at this club? And then there was like a lot of nightclub photography yeah. that I that I actually started with That's and bought cool. photography. Yeah. So, what was that point of finally saying, "Let's try this, let's do this," to where you did photography full time, or is uh, it just more of a gradual? Because sometimes it's just a gradual. Yeah, it, it was gradually like my skills are getting better and better, and uh, and. And then you wouldn't work for Cisco Foods. For I was a while, working too, for thing. yeah, I was working for Cisco mm. um, Foods after Beefaroo. Um, funny thing, I've actually been fired from all of my jobs. No, oh, really? <laughs> yeah. So I was never meant to be in school or in a job <laughs> or anything. Uh, the Cisco, I hey, I was there's just, a D thirty. They still sell it. Yeah. yeah. Dang, look at that. It's like one fifty now. Yeah. Oh, one second forty. We should go back to the camera we started with and just and see what we can do with it now. Coax out of it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that is a good Ma- idea. Max, Kiko. Max ISO is probably like three hundred or something crazy. I don't know. But just might be a Sony fourteen point two megapixel <laughs> sensor. Dang. Might wow. be a Sony DSR two fifty. Look that one up, Kiko. Dang. This is like on this is Google nostalgia images. central is. right now. It is. I feel like I just hopped in a time machine. <laughs> I know, and right? I'm like DSR two fifty. Yeah. <laughs> when when we talked about the DVDs, that's really what threw me back. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's crazy because my my daughter was like, uh, I don't know, it's been probably like a year or so. Maybe it was like recent. Like I said, I'm horrible with time. But she asked me. She's 11 years old. And she asked me. She's like, Dad, is it true that back back in your day, like people had like phones that were like stuck to the wall in your house and i'm like <laughs> they were like chained to the wall i was like wow like yeah, yeah. like i remember like really? sitting by the kitchen with a string like cord phone like by the, we had a chair there and i was like yeah. talking to my friends and then my mom would pick up the other phone and be like get off the phone i gotta use it oh, yeah. how old are that's, you that's the one i'm gonna be 34 in christmas oh you're not that much older than i yeah Zoom in oh, on that that's boy. yours. Oh, that was what I learned on. Still 780 bucks. That's what I learned on at college, you know, total broadcast style. And then I ended up buying a DSR 200, which was like a little bit below that one. That was like my that's... first camera, I... professional camera. Dude, you were that's like, not... that was like, you started. I mean, man, it's just Sia, man. Come yeah, on. I know. It's like, <laughs> He's got to have the top of the line. Like, <laughs> like, like, RBC Mass Com. That's what they were using, you know, back wow. in the day. 
Not interchangeable lenses, though. Uh, no. Okay. The, the, the Canon that, XL2 there was the first did, one, right? Had, um, but I, which was another one we used at the college, but I didn't. Okay, okay. Yeah. But and even, oh, ba- even back then, the Sony colors sucked and the Canon was way better. <laughs> 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 Canon, it, uh, who, who said this? Uh, is it Neil? I forgot who said this. Sorry, but I shouldn't like, say that. Neil, Neil's a Sony guy. Uh, yeah, Neil gets okay. Colors, then it curious. wasn't. Then it wasn't Neil. Uh, somebody. <laughs> so it was oh, it was, it was. It was. No, it was uh, Brian from uh, Blue Cross. Oh, he, we were yeah. talking about like just Canon and everything like that, and like he said, like Canon is like the Toyota of the camera world. Like it is. They're mm. just solid. They're you know what you get yeah. for. They last a long time. Color science has yeah. always been there. Like uh, they're just a solid system. Yeah. They're like just a great. It, it, it the would colors. I, I would compare it to Toyota really. Sure. And, like yeah. the camera world, it really is. Get your investment. Yeah. yeah. It's not yeah. like, you know, yeah. So it's But really fast cool. forward, so Luis really became probably, I mean, one of the most well respected photographers in Rockford, really owns the wedding or or owned the wedding, you know, game out here and coincided with I would say the growth of the wedding market in Rockford because Rockford kinda had become like a wedding hub with people coming out from Chicago. Yeah, and, now definitely and all that and mm. all the venues and you just really figure out that game. Specifically for the photographer, right? <laughs> Specifically for Luis. They're like Luis yeah. is out there, I'm gonna have my wedding rock. <laughs> well it was crazy because like the 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 you know, when you were saying like did it happen gradually, um yeah, it was getting better and better. Then I started like you really get into like the 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 modeling kind of like photography, more stylized, more strategic mm. on like what I was shooting instead of like, hey, let's get together and see what we come up with. Yeah. It was more like now I was starting to think of backgrounds, colors, and really paying attention to like more different things. Now that I had like the system down to the camera and like lighting a little yeah. bit. Um, and during that time, I was working at Cisco Foods, uh, which I was selling, you know, I was like a food rep, kind of like a liquor rep, but I would oh, go okay, around okay. restaurants and sell. Um, nothing bad to say about the company. I just was not for me. It was mm-hmm. not for me. I It was like, I think I was there for like three years or something. And I still don't know if I got fired or let go. I think I got my, my brother-in-law said I got let go. Cause I explained it to him and then he's like, yeah, you got, you got let go. I was like, cause I wasn't meeting. Like I, I just, I didn't do anything bad. I just was not meeting like the sales quotas. Like uh, I was just like underselling. It wasn't like you insulted this customer. No, like no. Frank was like telling Frank, us about. Yeah. It, lo, lo, lo key, I kind of, I kind of felt like they were trying to like, you know, you, you get that feeling like they're trying to get rid of me kind of thing. They want oh, me sure. to quit of my own accord. And you so, just yeah, but I, I never quit. I just held on. And then I, uh, the, I think like, uh, but like shout out to my bosses and everything. I won't mention names and stuff, but like they, they kind of gave me hints without telling me like, and they knew, they always knew that my passion, cause I talked about mm. my passion for photography so much. And, 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 uh, they, they like, they knew, they knew that like, I was not meant to be there. And, yeah. Like I was not in the corporate, like I just didn't fit in there, but I will say this, that, and this plays part of like my journey now and like who I am and, and like how I got to where I got to, I, if I could go back, I like, I hated those three years of like working mm-hmm. there. Um, yeah, but I would, have to do it all over again because it brought me to the level and taught me all the skills that I know now to like run my business and talk to like professionals and yeah sure. have more of a professional presentation too. Yeah. Um so I was always very I was actually very scared to talk to people. Mm. Very scared. I would never really talk to anybody. And now like wow. Now look at them. Now I just can't <laughs> stop talking kind of thing. Too. So I was like But you but know yeah. I think along with that one of the things that those jobs teach you is that it kind of gives you a vision for what you don't want yeah, out of I life. I want to be there. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, I worked landscaping. I worked at a factory. I worked at a metal mm-hmm. recycling factory or company. And all of those, well, they had little fun aspects of the job that I enjoyed. I'm like, that's what I don't want to do. Mm-hmm. You know, I want whatever I have in my mind, what I'm envisioning for my future, rather than just being stuck in one career path. Do you ever think about what your life would be like? if you had chosen to do not open up your your own business and then just stick with the last job you had or you know stick it go in the corporate realm man i don't know i i was scared cuz like it was hard for me at cisco because i was i want to say i was probably the youngest guy i'm like 90% sure of this like i was like the youngest guy I was like 21 years old mm, i think the wow. next youngest guy was like at the time was like 35 38 years old so uh, I didn't, to be honest, I felt like I didn't fit in. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember like there would be like, like, you know, meetings or like little corporate parties and stuff. And like, like I was, I felt like I was always kind of alone. Like mm-hmm. I just, I was never involved in the circle. Like, you know, they would go out 
to the bar and stuff like that. And like, I, I, I was never invited kind of thing sometimes. And yeah. sometimes when I was, I felt like it was just like, oh, I guess we should invite him kind of thing. But it was more like I could, you know, you could feel it. Yeah. You could just feel it. So that was like, I was like, I was pretty, I, I think I went through like a little depression during that time. I just felt mm-hmm. kind of like not, yeah. I felt like I didn't belong. But um, I forgot your question, your initial question. Uh, have that. you ever like, thought about what life would be like if you'd yeah. not chosen to do photography? Yeah, sometimes like if I, I don't know, I, I, when I do think about that, it feels dark. Mm. It feels uh, not dark, it's just like, it, like hopeless for me. I don't know, I just feel like yeah. I find like, I find so much happiness and being a creative and like, I, I love, I love what I do. I often get asked yeah. all the time, like, what would, what do you do on your days off? You feel like you're always working and it's like, but I'm not like, I, I love what I do. If, if, yeah. if I have a day off, obviously I'm going to hang out with my kids and stuff like that. But if you ask me like, what does Louise want to do for Louise? I would pick up my camera and go film. Mm-hmm. Like even when I'm not filming, I would obviously film something more that I like something that I want to film um instead of filming for like other brands and stuff like that um you know maybe something for myself or something a little bit more creative play with color grain and all kinds of stuff mm-hmm. um but i would still film in color grade i can color grade and film all day if like I never get tired of it just yeah. doesn't get old i dream about it i wake up i can talk about it all day and everything and i'm not i wouldn't That's- say i'm like techie geek like i don't get yeah, into like so either. much specs of the cameras or like mm-hmm. people ask me like oh what is what's that sensor and i'm like like, yeah, I know, right? I just, I'm like, the colors are good for me, and that's it. Like, I don't yeah. care about nothing else. Right? Yeah. I care about what it looks like, and that's where I've done some AC work, and ACs are very technical people. Yeah. yeah. Well, they have to be. They have to be, yeah. right. Yeah. And But I'm like... Look, I'm not super technical. I just I care about what the image looks like in the end. Well, you just lost all those job leads as a first AC. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I can do the slate second AC. Yeah, um, a little surprise. I did some a lot of digging, but I found something from Luis's work back Ooh. in the day. Oh, oh yeah, let's see it. Oh, oh that's oh, there, there. <laughs> look, look, yeah. Look at that hash. Like zoom in on that uh, that tag right there on the bottom. Like is that that's, the, that's my oh, logo, Herbal CO Photography. Oh, Herbal and I CO bet you felt so legit putting that on. Is that Dude. Jose? Yeah, that is Jose. That's my cousin Jose. That's Kiko. Yeah. And that's his brother. Uh, Kiko's brother? Yeah, Kiko's older brother. Kiko, yeah. what are you what are you riding there? That was looks like a G- was at the, Suzuki uh, GS. Workshop? That was uh, Katana. Yeah, Suzuki Katana. Oh, okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I had a GS five fifty, and it kind of looked like that. But yeah, they were all like riding, and 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 I was taking all these like cool photos and mm. i was like definitely like some light hdr happening there <laughs> up the, yeah up the clarity like 10 uh nice sharp yeah 10. Some, satur- some saturation push the sharpness the saturation yeah definitely yeah. vignetting there's vignetting you see it mm, like yeah. there's some vignetting happening good one yeah uh i just yeah. saw I just saw jose last night yeah so. he works on my cars <laughs> oh you know, yeah. It's, yeah he does he's too. an awesome mechanic it's interesting that i think the technology, the technology progressing, and just the ability to edit photos, like Lightroom, some of those, some of those features, like it's crazy. it really pushed photography. Yeah, more than the cameras, I would say, because yeah. you could just go in and post, and it would change it completely. And I mean, it's still yeah. a lot of photographers it's so are much easier. Now. It's all a lot of it is in post. Mm-hmm. You know, um, so now you are. I should have introduced this in the beginning too, because. You've been doing photography, wedding photography, and then um, lifestyle photography. Correct. And now you are going into video, have been going uh, into yeah. video for the last year. Mm-hmm. So I'm curious. I mean, I know you said that was kind of your first love, but what what brought up this change um, into wanting to pursue video production more? I think as a, uh, a creative and being a photographer for that long, uh, I felt like I reached kind of like it, just my own self, like a level where like I just was... Like, I love it. I still love it. Yeah, I just got comfortable, and it just felt like I, I needed more. Like, mm. I just needed something I, to challenge. The challenge, yeah. The challenge, and, and here's the thing, too, about, like, I when I started, like, I told just I think, because Josiah, I feel like you've seen both of my journeys. Like, you lit, like, I remember just asking you how to use DaVinci in the conference room, and I was like, I don't know how to cut this. And, like, yeah. I didn't even know about, you taught me about, like, Rec 709 and, like, color space, and I'm like, what is this? And, and then I we did, went out to Vegas and talked to the dudes themselves. Yeah. And you're and like, yeah. mind blown. Yeah. yeah, and I just learned, and um, I just always, like, started talking to people. But the, 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 uh, the switch to video was, like, because, like, I was just, like, I, need, I needed more. I was like, 
it's been so long doing photography and i'm like I, what mm-hmm. uh, what can also fulfill not just because remember i was for i i always consider myself a musician first even though i'm not a master of any instrument i love accordion yeah. i picked that up i don't know maybe like five years ago um could be longer than that but uh and i really love it i feel like the accordion is the instrument that i was meant to play um mm. i just i love it i don't have any time for it um every once in a while i'll like pick it up for like literally like 10 minutes play a couple little riffs and songs and then i'll put it back in mm. um i would never get rid of my accordions if the house was on fire those were the first things that i would grab <laughs> before my cameras probably before your children really? or uh, yeah what do you like huh? about the before accordion? your children <laughs> <laughs> well yeah I, i'll tell my children grab the other accordion, grab the other accordion. <laughs> let's get out let's go let's go uh but there so there was that part where it's a like, very russian instrument as well really the accordion wow yeah well i was stuck in this thing of like there's still part of me and maybe i could maybe this is for other creatives too maybe for josiah as well because i know he plays instruments too but like there is still always behind me like this thought of like i wish i could make like money in music if i if mm. if i could get paid what i'm getting paid right now just playing my accordion and being in music and recording music I it don't know if I would fully drop video, but I would be second for sure. Like, I would immediately switch to music. It is kind of interesting how many, like, in, mm-hmm. in the film production world, how many, like, people are musicians or, well, I joke, recovering musicians. You know, <laughs> pe- pe- people who thought they were going to make a living doing music and then ended up transitioning into, into the film production industry. Yeah. yeah. And, and perhaps also photography. Or, you yeah. Know, both creative arts, I suppose. But, yeah, I mean, I had a big background in music that's what i thought i was going to do all the way up through college in fact i i studied a little bit of mass com you know and then i switched to a music major <laughs> wow so definitely yeah. a passion there too but it's that's different it's it's difficult to make money at yeah i could but connect you with a guy who does mu- who does music as well his name is frank slowinski yeah <laughs> oh yeah i heard the, the I th- i've heard I of this guy like, i feel of like guy. all of the g- <laughs> people here jesse uh, jesse does it you know, part time. Jesse's the only one I who feel hasn't like, given up on his but dream. Like you guys like should all get together it, yeah. and Jesse start like a band. Start That's like a, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like just do a band together. I, but I, I suppose your flavors of music are all different. Whatever. I think anything. Just like I enjoy all types of music. You know, people say like, mm. oh, I hate country. Like I actually like some country music. And actually, I think yeah. that the, I would say that the kind of music that I play in accordion, uh, which is North Daniel music, I feel like that's kind of like our version of country music um it's still like very cowboy boots trucks you know the texas kind of vibe mm-hmm. um but uh back to your question the 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 video so there was that still there was still that like musician part of me and that was like how do i like i i want to do what i'm doing with photography but i also want to do something with music mm-hmm. and you know now with all the reels and like you know the the just social media the internet's it's more like it's it's pushing a lot of video now. So mm. then it started me and and also there was a part of me too that was like I'm starting to feel like I'm kind of like one of the OGs in the photography and there's like a new wave of like fresh talent coming up and stuff mm-hmm. like that and I and so now uh so I'm like starting to think like okay, I need to like Mo- what's my next step make a now? shift like before you're the, not yeah, cool again yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly exactly <laughs> mm. so i started looking at the as an entrepreneur i started looking at like okay where's the market at i know weddings very well and i'm like well there's not a lot of that i know of a lot of video guys out here doing like weddings and actually weddings was you my kidding first, me um <laughs> that i know that does weddings uh, that um there's oak house who yeah. i like here everywhere but other than that uh and then oh, i know talking about wedding, wedding wedding films yeah wedding, oh, gotcha, wedding gotcha. videographer yeah. whatever you know just what people call them um and that are like pushing it like hard that mm-hmm. i would that i would see their names and being in the in- wedding industry for you know 10 years or so um that i would hear the name so oak house obviously you know shout out to matt you know i think that um i great work and i always see his stuff everywhere and and i cough um, matt yep, Ikoff? Matt, yeah. matt, yep matt i cough and uh awesome guy always talk to him he's always willing to like share information and stuff like that and and uh so i was like well like the photography world i feel like it's becoming more saturated um i don't know Mm. if it's because how like i think that it's way easier than when i started photography like the like the editing tools that even lightroom has like those photos that we pulled up those i used to edit everything in photoshop Uh. i didn't know there was no like 
copy paste that. Lightroom is like a shortcut, I feel like. Oh, Lightroom yeah. is like so fast. Is that what you edit on still? No. photography? N- oh, my. Wedding? Oh, it's Lightroom, yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. gosh. The Photoshop. I know a lot of them will either outsource the editing. Yep, outsourcing. Or there's yeah, like AI stuff. There's AI now, stuff. So like, there's. Really? I, I know okay. people. Yeah, I know some of my friends like using AI for like calling weddings, for like editing. I've never touched AI before. Yeah. Um, and so I don't know. I don't. I, I like. I'm a control freak, so I like to have control of everything. And, yeah. and it's not even about the control. It's like I enjoy every part of it. I know photographers that only like the shooting part. And then when they get home, it's like now I got all these thousands of photos to go through for weddings mm-hmm. and that all that would stuff. Be me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then they're like and then there's, you know, then you got the other guns that are like, I hate the shooting and the in person and talking to people and like being in, in, like having that pressure. But I enjoy at home, like just editing the photos and all that stuff. I like all of it. Mm-hmm. Um so filmmaking and the video stuff, really, when I was starting to make the shift, I'm like, well, there's not a lot of, um, I feel like, competition in that area versus photography. Um, there's a lot of awesome, talented photographers now rising and just taking, you know, like this mm-hmm. is just a whole new wave of people. And um, I'm like, how do I stay relevant? And like, and so my strategy was like, um, okay, well, if the, all these new photographers are coming up and then I'm still kind of trying to hang in there with photography you're trying to be like the cool guy still or whatever i don't even mm-hmm. you know i don't even consider myself that anymore but um you know they're, they're these guys are taking lead i'm like how do i stay re- like relevant how do i keep like um getting business so i'm like well mm-hmm. if i move over to video now these people are not going to consider me competition and i can ride with them too as the video guy mm-hmm. because they don't you know, the, the, the newer photographers won't see me as like, oh, well, why would I be doing stuff with you? Because you're a photographer. I'm a photographer. Yeah. And stuff like that. Yeah. So I'm like, I'll just switch to video and then help them also like grow their brands and really promote photographers. And I feel like I'm moving more towards like a mentor, um, like like on, on like teaching on like what I've went through and mm. with and just sharing just sharing my knowledge I don't claim to like know exactly technical stuff but like I can share my experiences yeah the bad things I've made a lot of mistakes and um and so that was kind of like the, the shift to, to video but I felt like video really fulfilled um I really do feel like filmmaking documentary shoot run and gun you know production stuff every all the video stuff I feel like it fulfills that musician part of me and everything else because mm. I, mm-hmm. I didn't lose the photography aspect of it like i can still play around with composition lighting yeah but now you added like storytelling so like as a creative like my imagination is always going like yeah me and francisco always like go off like sometimes some, one of the, the this is kind of something like me and francisco do when we're like either on a road trip or like somewhere we like start you, making you guys work a lot together yeah too. yeah, yeah. Should, oh, he right. second shoots for you right yeah we should right, clarify yep 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 and so we do this thing where like we start like for fun with just like people watch and then we'll make like stories about them yeah back yeah. Like, right. like yeah and so we do like, like we'll amazing. see some guy and be like dude that guy looks like he just got a divorce and is really <laughs> and is really good at like doing taxes like he, he will get you like the best credits ever and we like we'll like we 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 like um like we like make we, we get so creative and we get yeah. so deep with it and like imagine like we can go hours and hours like when we went to california on a road trip like we literally just talked nonsense the whole way there. It was like a 38 hour road trip. And yeah, it was, it was just like, we were That's just brutal. laughing, like crying so much, like yeah. making up just all made up stuff. Nothing was real. Um, and so it fulfilled the storytelling. And then apart from that, it's like, you're also kind of a sound engineer with, you have to be like you to bring in music mm-hmm. to really complete that whole feeling of that yeah. image that you're looking, yeah. the build up, the voices, everything. So I felt like, it's fulfilling all of those pieces in me. And I was like, this is like filmmaking to me now looks like it's, it's, it's all of that. Like it really completes me and it like fulfills me in every single way as a musician, sound, music, mixing, everything. So, yeah. So and you, and you also are really good at social media. That's something mm-hmm. you post all the time, which that yeah. in itself is very difficult to do, to remember to do it. Number yeah. one, yeah. and then to put out stuff that's, relevant or you know people want to see all that but um and you also taken over city stages um social yeah, as yeah, well so yep. you, you manage the uh, photography yep. studio here um but i had a question on top of that and it totally left my mind uh, i was going to go oh where do you think this is something that i think about quite a bit because 
things are changing in the creative space. Yeah. AI, the tools that you have at your disposal now, even with the you know, the last two, three years, and talking about being prepared, you know, how do you move forward? Where do you go next? Where do you think the industry is going? I think this is gonna be one of my top questions because in- I'm just so curious on what people think the next even two to five years bring to creative business owners. You know, just just the introduction of AI alone and the accessibility to get into this line of work. Like the, uh, are, you, are you talking in the wedding industry or like just in general, just like in general, photography or video or the, whatever? Everything's going to become easier and it's going it to be YouTube University times five times 10. You know what I mean? If you don't have to even edit anymore and you can just plug it in and say, hey, this is the flavor I want into the editing program. And it does it all And for it you. spits it out. Where where do we head? Will people appreciate what we do, uh, what a, an individual does, as opposed to a, a a tool, or will they be interchangeable? I I think that with the rise of AI and like all this, you know, AI art, I guess you would want to call yeah. it, or even these tools. I think that I actually think it's going to benefit like people like us that it like will do well. It depends, I guess, if you're using AI, then... There's yeah. going to be more people, right? Right. But I think that it's going to make our stuff, like the people that are not using AI, more valuable because mm-hmm. then it becomes kind of like everything becomes kind of generic. But how will you tell? That's that's where I think, too. But then how are you going to be able to tell something that's done by a person and not? Hmm, that is true. I, I yeah. don't think that, that, like, the camera operator itself will... Unless you, are like, have something like this where maybe maybe like the switching between who's talking there's probably already ai controls that mm-hmm. as i that's not really mic triggered like as yeah, i talk it there switches are. to me oh, there to are, you definitely. pans in you can probably set we like don't a, have access to it yeah. unfortunately <laughs> no, <there's laughs> we gotta set it up. So I'm, I'm the only option you guys yeah have, we got so a kiko yeah. kiko is the ai <laughs> kiko is yeah. a 3.0 version i don't know i think i think it it's i feel like it's scary in a way of like uh i feel like the market can get overly saturated with yeah photographers like i'm a yeah. photographer now because before it was like you bought a dslr now you're a photographer yeah. kind of mm-hmm. in our world you yeah you're a dp if you buy a camera yeah, yeah right yeah oh okay so yeah photography is like you buy a camera you buy some presets for like 50 bucks and you slap them on there now you are you're a photographer now yeah um so but you know as i think about that maybe it pushes the art forward because it will there's this been there's been this transition from okay cameras got pretty good then edit well, and it's kind of at the same time, editing got really good. So you have the combination of both worlds, but then you kind of had to. You didn't have to care so much about the composition and the art and the the framing and the posing. Maybe that comes back and becomes a little bit more prevalent. I don't know, just spitballing. Well, but, just something that came to mind is you know you were talking about uh, the looping software you used to use or. Um, Music. Oh, for, yeah, oh, Fruity yeah, Loops. Yeah, yeah, yeah Fruity, Fruity Loops. Loops. Yeah, Fru- Fruity Loops. Was that what it was called? Yeah, Fruity Loops. <laughs> yeah. Is that like Garage Band? Yeah, it, 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 for, no. for, for making yeah. beats and like, yeah, uh, making beats and yeah. stuff. There's like more like a lot of plugins and like synthesizers okay. and stuff like that, and like you can set drum. Yeah, I don't. Loops. I, yeah, I, I was not familiar with that one, but you know, back when I was much more into audio, um, like Logic. Um, um, I, I used Pro Tools. Mm, yeah. Oh, Pro Tools, yeah. And uh, Audacity was a free one. Audacity, yeah. Was yeah. new on the scene at yeah. the time. But I don't I think Audacity has changed at all. <laughs> yeah. I think it's the same that layout. Like, <laughs> that you mm-hmm. download it over dial-up internet. Yes. And <laughs> but I, like I just, you know, the, the whole idea of AI, I remember there was this, you know, you, you set a drum beat or, or whatever. Mm. and But then there was this, uh, this uh, tool in there that you could use that was called Humanize. You remember that? Mm. Or it's, 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 but the idea, mm. essentially, it would just add, it would just try to add some melody in, or something to it. It would try to add some imperfection to like the rigidity of the computerized music that you just created. Because, you know, when a musician performs, it's not, yeah. it's not ones and zeros. There's emotion in it. There's, you know, right. it's different. The so, volume goes up and down. And yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. And I mean, obviously, we're talking about, that was a long time ago now <laughs> in, wow. in, the, in the world of tech. And you know that element is probably getting better, but there's there's always a certain level of imperfection in like humanity that you're mm-hmm. looking for. I think in in art and yeah, in, you know what we're creating, it, and that is true. That that's what people that, want that real grounding to it. And I think that's that's one of the things that's kind of hard to capture with 
with AI because it's always just it's regurgitating something that's already out there in some form and you know kind of mashing yeah. it up in some different way. Well, it's like the way, or even like if you were talking about like like the, the the software that like automatically cuts between the cameras, like yeah, but it's using like the prompt of your voice. Like that's we call that like on the nose editing, where it and cuts see, right yeah. to the person. Like that one is great. I think yeah. that's a great tool. And like mm -hmm. there's a yeah. lot of even for coloring, Lightroom changed the game in terms oh of my gosh, color yeah. correcting. Right. Yeah. Those are all great tools, mm -hmm. but there is going to come a time where it's going to actually take jobs. And I mean, even films and yeah. video production well, like, sets, like our teams are smaller now, right? Yeah. People are in swing positions because we don't have We the don't budgets. need three people to operate a carbon arc. Exactly, exactly. Fixture. And just LED lights, <laughs> imagine, just think of how much they've changed the game, right? Yeah. So I'm, I'm just always fascinated with, yeah. just like you and your business in the photography, you saw, you know, I mean, you got it, you kind of felt like you owned it or, you know, finally we were at a place where you weren't growing or pushing yourself, whatever it may be. Um, but on top of that, it's just also the, to me, how do you prepare for the next five years, you mm -hmm. know, as a business? Because, yeah, we're creatives, but we also, this is how we make money. This is how we put bread on the table and trying to be prepared for that it gets me a little depressed. I'll be honest. Sometimes, yeah, it, yeah. but um, I don't know. Maybe maybe it's not going to be as massive a change. But think of the change that we've had in the last ten years. So, uh, I think it's a. I think it's going to actually. Sometimes I think it's going to benefit us because it's kind of mm. like I see it like kind of like film photographers. Like, uh, I just recently started like looking into. Not I'm not going to get one. I keep saying this, but uh, the Leica M6. <laughs> oh they, yeah, they just got that out. I guess it's like a new thing. Um, the other day, I like it's a newly developed film camera, right? It, it, like I guess I guess it was from what I learned was like it used to be like a, the like one of the most popular Sought like after, a camera, yeah. Like a, yeah. And then they stopped, they discontinued yeah. it, and then they just they remember like how bad it like how awesome it was, yeah. and or something like they just mm. re re brought it back okay. again. Like well, new. So, somebody recently developed a new camera that's analog. I th maybe it was it, it, maybe it's that one. I don't know. It's just re like newer, but hmm. like but, it's yeah. that M six and exa exa and and uh, maybe that's what it is. But anyways, like people are still sh like love film, like mm -hmm. love shooting the film, and like there's and they keep saying it. Like I mean, even digital photography. Like I try to replicate sometimes some of that like film look, and I feel like yeah. doing video has doing video actually has changed the way I look at photography and even the way I even grade and look at my photography too. Like it's changed my editing. Mm -hmm. I think very subtle. I don't think that some of my clients like, or like not clients, but like I'm just saying like people that will follow me would be able to tell maybe you guys, cause you guys were in this, in this business, right. Where you can tell the differences. Um, but it's made me take a second look at like coloring and contrast and the way I see things because now I'm, I try, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm a lot more subtle uh, with what, what I do, you know, with, with my edits and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that people are going to, like, same thing like film. They're going to miss that, like, rawness, like that, the imperfections, which is what I do with weddings. I shoot that documentary style. I don't yeah. do the, uh, everything's handheld, everything's scratch audio, and there's something just different about that, like, handheld look, the yeah. running behind. Like, I don't think that AI it's going to be very hard to like mimic somebody just like walking by. And yeah. Like and there's filming. certain things like AI is not going to create like a documentary at a, about a business. Right. You know, like going around their facility like that's Right. Or at least mm. the, probably yeah. not in our lifetime. <laughs> yeah. There, there's certain aspects that it can take over, but like going and yeah. interviewing a CEO or something like that. But, and you've, you, you've found a kind of a unique niche too, where you're, um, you know, You've been saying run and gun, but yeah, just uh, you, you've really honed in on like the social media reels. You're like, that's yeah. a big part yeah. of like where a lot of this just content showed us is, one, which yeah. is awesome, is getting pushed. Yeah, so that's that's exactly what you're doing, and it's a it's a difficult uh, market for, um, you know, a production to serve just because it has almost like a expendable nature to it. Like it's it's such a short yeah, lifespan so in yeah, a way very that you lifespan. need to be able to do it in kind of a a yeah. quick and. Uh, Quick and dirty. Quick and dirty yeah, way, yeah. but like with some, but you're some able to inject it, yeah. some flavor and cre creativity that like gives gives them what they want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that, I mean, and going, you're killing it. You know, yeah. With, with I, that, I agree. Like your, offering. your social media is 
uh, I mean, I'm coming to you, for, you know, with this podcast. I'm like, when should I post? <laughs> yeah. Just basic questions, too. But um, you just showed us a reel today of somebody where you said, hey, just let me uh, do what I think would be great. And then if you like it, you can use it. But if you don't, you don't have to use it. Let me just show you what I can do. Yeah. And it was quick, mm -hmm. but it was it looked great. Same script. It, yeah. Here, here. Same script. So, is there? Do you have an uh, an approach to these um, social uh, videos, or do you just kind of how do you come up with the concepts and ideas for um, for all these different clients that you have? Is there a formula, or does it just kind of come on the spot? It, it does come on the spot, but it it does take a little bit of background work. Like I do, like I do study my clients. Okay. their brand and i follow them i see what they like i like i literally mm. go through all of their previous reels i look at their posts i see what kind of content they're putting out and and so that way when i come talk to them i'm like this is what i'm seeing and i can i can read right away like sometimes i can tell that like it's the front receptionist like posting for like mm -hmm. their social media yeah nothing wrong with that um it's not the but same I, but it's not the same and i feel like sometimes like an employee might not care much about your business like it's as clearly much as not what they're hired and, and they're for. not yeah That's exactly really they're not what they're point. hired for so they're just like sure i'll post this picture just take a picture of that and they just like do the obvious like here's a picture of this cup take it write yeah. something about it and then post it instead of getting like really putting in that creative or creative because uh, people want to be uh, people that are watching this stuff want to be entertained and educated and mm -hmm. Um, that's kind of what I try to always, those are the kind of the fundamentals of when I go, like, how can I educate somebody, but also entertain them at the same time? Yeah. Edu edutainment. Yeah. Edutainment. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. A really interesting point that you brought up. And it's a really good sales point as well, mm -hmm. that, uh, an employee that you have doing social media for you is not going to be the same as a creative, you mm -hmm. know, because we do. I don't know if business owners really fully understand the amount of investment that we make into the company mm -hmm. from the first right. point of contact to, you know, the, the video, the project we shoot, the photos we take, whatever it is, we really do put in a lot of not only like physical effort, but it's also mind energy that we think about, okay, how can we do this different? How can we do it better? What are they trying to say? You know, trying to align and you become almost a part of their branding team yeah. in a way if, if you're good at it. Um, but, oh, I'll say, well, I did want to say your approach to documentaries it, is you found out another, just like from your childhood, where you would find these different little areas to make money or do something different that nobody else is doing. You've done that with your wedding films as well, and you yeah. showed me yeah. that. So I'm just going to give you, I'm just going to give him a quick overview of what you're doing, but, and then you can dive in. But he's, I like how you explained it to me, where you said, I, I film the weddings and I tell the brides this, that it's as if your uncle is holding the camera. And the, I'm the there cam. capturing the dad cam. The dad, yeah. dad cam, the dad yeah. Cam. yeah. I'm there capturing whatever funny moments happen, whatever weird things happen, unexpected things. It's all a part of your day, and that's what gets captured. And I think I really have not seen a wedding film like that mm -hmm. in a long time. Probably with, since I saw my mom. More with the quality of a documentary exactly. than in like the audio, Uncle Bob. The, the audio and the video yeah. quality of a filmmaker. But then the spontaneity and the organic nature of a dad cam. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. handheld. Like sometimes, like I'm panning to the floor and I'm walking and I'm like, oh, I need to lift up the camera. There's something happening. And yeah. like even those little moments that just really submerge you in it. You know, and that's, like that's something that's unique to like it, you as well as like your ability to be just to connect with people in the real, yeah, in, in mm -hmm. like a social environment too. Cause like that'd be a really tough thing to do if you're like, an introverted sort of like you just want yeah. to be behind the yeah. sort of camera sort of guy. Like you, ha I imagine you have a lot of interaction with people as oh, you're like going around. Oh yeah, and, definitely. And, and doing this thing, I get pe I get people in the weddings too. Like that'd um, be really tough for me. Like I, yeah, that's not my. It, I mean, I'm, I'm a social guy, but like going mm -hmm. out of my way to like, yeah. what do you think about the bride today? Like that's just yeah. not me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's funny because like sometimes I'll go up to people and uh, you know at the weddings and I have this little mic 
And I'm like, it's usually during cocktail hours when I try to get some people to, and I, and you know, you can kind of, mm. you, you, it comes with practice, but you can read, yeah. you can get some of the people that you can kind of go yeah. up to and, yeah. and like, they're not going to say anything. Um, uh, but sometimes they're not, not ready to talk. And I'm mm. like, um, I'll, I'll just be like, like, Hey, what do you got to say to the bride and groom? Say something special. This is their doc for their documentary. And they're like, Oh, uh, I don't know what to say. And I, and like, I'll give them the mic and sometimes they don't, don't take it, but it's like a clip on mic. So yeah. I'll literally like, I'll clip it onto their shirt. <laughs> like, I, and then I just start, and then I lift up the camera and I say three, two one and like i just hit record and then they're like oh okay and then they just say something and then it ends up being really really cool yeah. um obviously i think that does take some ex some uh some experience yeah. and like mm -hmm. reading people yeah. um so that's kind of how i get the it's interaction almost like the audacity of a reporter yeah and i don't know like a street he, reporter here's something interesting too that like in the in the in my wedding documentaries like i'm a character in the wedding film and mm -hmm. this is what i tell my couples like if you ever think about like the show The Office, I don't know if people really paid attention, but the camera guy the is a, a character. He's yeah. a character in the in the mm -hmm. show. Yeah, that ro you don't roll, or, roll their eyes at the camera. Or whatever. Yeah, they roll their <laughs> eyes, or sometimes they like close the door on him, and they're like, "No, get out! Like, what are you doing here? Like, get mm -hmm. out!" And they're like, "He's like, he like talks, but with the camera movements." Mm -hmm. So I do that. I do that the same, like in in the weddings, and they sometimes like my brides will talk to me in on the camera, and I put that on their documentary and say, "Hey, Louise, how are you?" And then like. You know, I'll I'll yeah. I'll say hi, and sometimes my voice is on the documentary too, uh, but it's just that rawness of it. And I feel like um, from all the feedback I've gotten back from these documentaries, like they really love them. Like mm -hmm. it's just like having all those like in between moments uh, in there are like actually more important. Sometimes they like it, like value those more than everything else. Obviously, yeah. by default, if you're like a wedding you know professional, by default you are going to get the ceremony. The, the speeches and then yeah, your, sure. your dances those like the yeah. main three things it's interesting how you've uh, like is that an idea that you came up with yourself like that whole kind of documentary approach or do you like come across it somewhere or, like, I've always the... liked the documentary uh, work like just like the like no rules like just hop in the back of a car and you're like filming and like the car's sure. moving and mm. people are talking and then you get off and you're like running behind I just like <laughs> that whole like feel yeah. but then on top of that I'm like okay one of the things that I did was like how do I I already knew this from being in the wedding industry for 10 years, but I was like, all right. And this is where the entrepreneur mind came in before I got into the wedding video. I was like, I did a lot of research and I was like, I know that a lot of my couples like, or just couple or just wedding in general and couples, like, I feel like they always save their money, their, but their budget, like the crumbs of the budget for like video. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's always just been the, yeah. the, the story, you know? And it's like, so I started asking, like for like the whole past year, I started asking, like after I would send out weddings, I would like start asking some of my couples, like, why did you not get video or or did you like your wedding video? Like not my wedding videos, like this is before I got into video. This is when I was doing photography. Mm. So I was starting to get like get some information. Yeah. And a lot of them were like, yeah, you know, like we just didn't like we we only had a little bit of budget left and we're like, whatever, like who we don't care what the video looks like. We just want some video and like. We have mm -hmm. about a thousand bucks to spend, or fifteen hundred bucks, or something, um, which is crazy because it's like not, not a lot. Like that's a yeah, it'd be coming out negative for sure. Right, um, right. So, uh, you know, I was like, okay, like why? Why is that? Why don't like video so much more? I wouldn't say more powerful than photography, but I would say that it's at the same level. I mean, you get definitely be more compelling. Just yeah, with, it's just you know, like you got the sounds senses like, being involved. Exactly. Yeah. You like you got grandmother speaking in there. You got oh, you got messages. There's more life to it. Like I don't know. Like I was like, why is it at the end of like everything else? Like even like before anything. So it's like yeah, why? And so I'm, my, I'm like, well, they're not finding value. They're obviously yeah. not being connect. They don't feel connected emotionally to their films they they're not like mm -hmm. it's why interesting is that? that i mean i'm just looking at it kind of like from a industry history standpoint like before b before either of us got into the industry vi wedding videos weren't really a thing mm -mm. right i mean like people they would, were like in the 90s that was like a default no. well, right? but it, like your uncle would do it or something yeah it right, wasn't right. someone you would hire right. someone to, nope. to do it yeah mm -hmm. and then maybe they got in i guess there was this phase where maybe you'd hire someone who's just basically covering the event you know mm -hmm. and then around the time you you and i got into the industry there was a kind of a push for like these wedding films or like yeah this it was wedding, like let's like, make yeah. it look cinematic well, stuff. yeah That's cinematic <laughs> wedding films but it was like this two two to four minute thing yeah yeah and i mean still still it's a cool cool thing I but wonder... like maybe people have gotten over that and you just found this way to kind of reinvent like Enthusiasm. Yeah, well, yeah. I, that's what actually color. inspired me because, like, I I think I still have like my mom's like it's weird. I have my mom's like um, 
I don't think it's weird, but like she doesn't have her her wedding video. I have it, like her VHS. Mm. And I remember watching that, and I was like, "Man, like this is like so cool." I, I think it was my uncle that filmed that wedding. Actually, oh. um, mm. he's a chief firefighter here um, in the Rockford department. Yeah, okay, oh, cool. um, Luis Duran, shout out. Um, but uh, I think he filmed it. If I'm if I'm not mistaken, and and I just remember like seeing myself there as like a you know, I think I was like eight or seven or something like that. And I was I mean, it was the time when I was playing in a band. And uh I remember like just the raw moments of zooming mm-hmm. in and out, me running around as a little kid, yeah. and then he like pans over and there's people like just serving like, you know, food at the wedding, and then like the uncles yeah. are talking and saying stuff to the camera. And, like I felt so connected to the video. I didn't care that the shots were on a drone, yeah. Yeah. cinematic yeah. and anything, and like I value that video so much and like I keep it. And so I'm like like and I started looking at nowadays, it's like this stuff is like it's beautiful. It's like you know cinematic, the drone shots, the 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 the, the, the kiss and the, the gimbal goes around them, and it's the like it's all yeah, it's the shoes, it's and like the it's ring. beautiful, but yeah. it's like they they're not gonna justify spending you know if you want to like l- just put it even at the photography you know price range, which is right now I would say averaging like thirty five hundred bucks, thirty thousand and thirty five hundred bucks, maybe forty five hundred here in Rockford, right? Obviously mm-hmm. Chicago's it's a whole different regional, thing, yeah. yeah. But I'm like. How do I hit that? Because obviously I'm not going to like drop photography and then like just start doing this over here. Right. And, you know, start losing more money or whatever. But I'm like, how do I how do I bring that value? And I'm like, people are not being connected to their wedding films. Mm -hmm. So I started shooting this doc style where like literally and I just said like, hey, this is kind of like the old school style. Like, I know it sounds weird, but it's like the dad. But if you think about it, like you're 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 thinking. Telling telling us about that the wedding video of your mom's that you watched, like mm-hmm. what what was the interesting part of it? Was it them walking down the aisle and saying their vows and you know probably no no it was, like it was the, it all was the, stuff the in between of yeah it was it all was the like in between not the, the main uncles, event you know making a fools of themselves yep. over here or yep. the, you know whoever is saying this thing behind yeah. the scenes and there's me like running around like the tables as a kid with my cousins and like you or know. saying like oh that person was there that's crazy you yeah know? like that, that's yeah sort of the lighting was like whatever that light was like if it was one light bulb like that's what <laughs> it, no, I didn't care about yeah. any of this stuff yeah. I was so connected to this video so that's what I'm trying to bring back but like 20, 2023 yeah. version of that well yeah. it connects in with your love of the eighties too. Yeah, it like, does. It <laughs> does. It's like a yes. And then here's another thing too. Well, besides the whole connection and the whole documentary style and being like raw with the with the footage, I also needed a way to how do I deliver this like basically like I what I deliver now is something new, but it's like it's called a documentary film. So it's like a 60 to 90 minute film. You wow. might be thinking like, "Whoa, this guy's like like this takes a long time to edit." It takes a little long. It takes a little longer, but it but now I've gotten it to the point that I, it takes me as long as it takes me to edit a whole wedding in photos. And mm. um, actually, the four to six minute highlight takes me longer because yeah. I, yeah, I have to be, you have just mm. six minutes to really get the juices out of it. And there's mm-hmm. so much good stuff in the wedding that, like, yeah. you don't know what to pick and whatnot. And, you know, hoping that the, the, the things that you do pick to make this film, the client's going to be like, oh, there was, a, what about this other, like, juicy moment in my wedding? Like, well, this is how I, like, created this, you know? Yeah. Um, but the apart from all of that, I needed also a system that was efficient and fast. Because w- if you guys obviously know me, I like I, I like yeah. to systemize things. I like to like like me, it has to me, be to be able to make yeah. it yeah, affordable to, to be make it affordable and still make a profit off it. Correct yeah. and turn around. So I'm like, I don't. I need to still be in a backpack like I do in one camera and have like I have another cinema camera in my backpack too. So two, but just in case one fails or whatever. But like, uh, how do I? Like I can do it alone. I I less gear and and just simple and yeah. and just being straight up honest, on, like right from the beginning. Like this is w- look at what I do. Like look at my films. I like, really look at them because they're handheld and every film is unique. Like I had films mm-hmm. where I I can't get people to talk. Some guests are just like don't want to say anything, and I'm just like that's cool. I'm not gonna force you to say something i'll still come around and ask Mm -hmm. um and then i have weddings that everybody's involved louise come here let me say something to the camera and like that's cool and like but that's part of the family culture you're capturing yeah 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 like if you were trying to come to like one of my family events and try to get us to dance yeah not gonna have good luck but (laughs) yeah guys but sorry can we can we have something do you have anything on your phone that i can throw up uh, on the screen for just a little sample of the style that you shoot for the. it it should be on my youtube uh uh, i'm on your youtube but most of those are like i uh yeah, we'll, you we'll, we'll, yeah. If you pass can, me my phone, I could yeah. show you like a little glimpse of like my most recent one. You can airdrop uh, it to the to the Mac, and I'll I'll put it, it on the screen. And we uh, are over the hour mark at this point, so we should start wrapping this up. But let's see if yeah, we can get a little taste of this yeah. new 
duck style. Yeah. Well, we, video. we can cut through when I started asking and that way we can. Use. No, that's okay. Uh, the, the thing I wanted to say, uh, Luis, is that when you first showed me um, one of your, it was like a few weeks ago that we sat down and you showed me uh, one of your wedding films. And it, it really did bring me back to watching my mom and dad's wedding in the mid nineties obviously higher quality and you know the camera wasn't aimed at the ground <laughs> half the time but you've you've managed to secure that grounding that a video needs but at the same time make it feel very organic mm -hmm. and just like joe was saying i don't know if wedding filmmakers just kind of we're so focused on the visuals and so mm -hmm. focused on making it cinematic and yes. beautiful it's, it's and movements art, on you know? gimbals, yeah. you know, all that, which I understand, you know, I have the drive to. Right. And that's why I never really wanted to do wedding films because I, I thought it, it's just you're kind of doing these same camera moves and you don't, um, yeah. you don't get, you're not oh, allowed. Go. go to the beginning. Here, hold on. Sorry. Uh, here, pull it up. I, the first, um, can we, can, can people hear this or no? Uh, yeah, I think. You okay, so go to the beginning of this, like the first, like you know, like all the way to the beginning. Yeah, go all the way to the beginning. So and does he have to turn on the audio channel? Press. Yeah. Oh, it's all silent. No, we should. Kiko, here. can you here. raise the slider up on it? The audio. Uh, they're all up. I wonder if people can see it. So here, start it uh, real quick. Sorry. Um, but like, um, uh, so uh, there we go. I can kind of hear it. Hearing some sound. So see right there, she said, hi, Louise. And like, this is the beginning of it. But this is like ex perfect example right here. Look, watch. She drops her earring. Look, camera pans down. <laughs> I pick it up and I give it. See, I'm a character. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like, I don't, I don't, I've never seen a videographer pull, a, uh, add a clip like that into yeah. a wedding film. That's cool. And then yeah, the mom's talking to me and I'm just like following her and look like, look at these camera movements now i'm like pen now like i'm going to the groom now i'm getting his side of the stuff and um look the photographers are just setting up the like usually the photographer or videographer would film the 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 details already all set up mm -hmm. where well, i'm filming the photographers talking about setting it up and how yeah. they should do it yeah and like how beautiful these things are um the moms were just literally prepping this like slideshow for the show and they were just talking about like oh my gosh i remember how uh you know luke was a little kid here and She's showing me her tattoo there that she got for her. And she's explaining to me like what it is and like see like the zoom ins and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So like it's just straight like raw, like with what I'm what like with what I'm delivering here. And it's all handheld. I feel like the handheld like really submerges you into what's going on. And uh, this is like this whole film is like an hour, 48 minutes. Yeah, see, this is this is something that would make me want to do yeah. wedding films. Like, just fast forward just to the some documentary, other stuff. Like, rough documentary nature of it. Yeah, and rough not. She's opening up her gifts. Look, like photographers flashing. I don't care. Like yeah. I'm just capturing. Like, look, she's so happy. Her friends made her this scrapbook with all her pictures, and but she's I think, crying. I think she's gonna get a lot more out oh, of this in definitely. ten years when she's showing it to her kids. Oh my gosh, definitely. Then having something that's really artistic and you know it's backlit. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just the right composition, the mm -hmm. right camera movement. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, but. Emotionally, In, though. Emotionally, what are her kids going to want to see? Mm -hmm. uh, a six-minute cut of artsy shots? Yeah. Or an hour and a half of something that All is... All the family. Maybe that's where we missed the mark, man. Convailing yeah. the day. You know? So you that's, where I, that's where I saw that. And, and dude, that, like, that's I, I'm, it's interesting to hear some of your background. Can I tell you a little story here just uh, let me let okay. me summarize quick it, it's interesting to hear your background into no we don't uh, we can keep rolling you can cut you this got, you're good right two two different I'm episodes good. like okay it's just like, like people I, still want to keep listening I'm, to i mean <laughs> luis is so entertaining they're I'm, not gonna want to stop hearing like this could be part one and part two or whatever yeah. i don't care like but hearing your entrepreneurial nature yeah. as a kid and hearing all the different things and how you would think differently about how to be different or how to make money differently yeah um and then seeing this progression, it's just awesome to see how, you know, you're still doing this. You're still trying to figure out ways to be different, to Maybe be unique. Keep reinventing yourself, you know. Yeah. Yes. Staying yeah. on top of the wave. So many people don't do that, and they just stay stagnant. I'm guilty of it. Mm. I've done it. Um, yeah. Where you just don't look ahead and don't see yourself objectively of like, oh, where am I in 
life, but also in the the funnel of, or I guess in the organization of other photographers, other filmmakers, you yeah. know? So um, I love to see that, and, and I love that style. It really makes me want to be. very cool. Yeah. Wanna, I wish do I wedding had films. that done at my wedding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're, you know, uh, um, uh, a lot, you know, with the film and everything, too, like uh, Paige and Luke, uh, that was the most recent one I did, um, and they, uh, every couple that have done the documentary film, um, just have loved it. And she said that her mm-hmm. niece literally watches it like a movie over and over and over <laughs> really? and over again. Yeah, yeah just like yeah, skip, skip, yeah, skip, skip through. And, what is this venue? Uh, Everything is it's white. It's called the uh, Providen- Vineyard Providence. It was at the beginning of the video. Okay, we're going to um, have to censor this. they got Brewer's jerseys on. We, we can't support <laughs> oh, that. Oh, man. Yeah. But like, see, here's the entrances to the parents. Uh, you know, uh, see, I didn't have multi-cam. Like, I don't have, like, yeah. I had one camera up on the top and, uh, I it think is I really stopped. like Uncle Bob at the wedding meshed with like a documentary. Yeah, look, dude. zoom in. Like, then I would go up to like the bride and groom because they were like rating the entrances like with a number up there. <laughs> um, and yeah, like I'm literally running in there, and I don't care if the photographer gets in there and everything. Like, yeah, you can go up like, and then the end, I kind of like do like a mashup of like dancing and finish it off with like a bang here. Uh, yeah. Go a little bit more, more, more. This, the dances, obviously. And the cool thing about a documentary film is that it includes the full ceremony, full speeches, full dances, full everything. So that's why mm-hmm. it's also an hour and 48 minutes. Cause that, all that stuff is included in full. So I don't just do the, the, you get the full ceremony speeches, uh, dances, which is what most typical videographers do. You get those. And then most just deliver the raw footage. I'm like, Hey, that raw footage, I'm going to fit in between there and create a documentary instead. Mm. So you are getting the raw footage, but it's all built into a documentary. Um, and so it, to me, it makes more sense. It's finished. It's a finished product. Yeah. And I'm like, what are you going to do with raw footage? Like, are you like log, yeah, like no. a normal person, like log footage? Like unless they're right, color yeah. grading it. And even then you're going to click on like what, like a hundred and some clips just to watch right, something. Right. Um, so, um, if you go to like the end, no, just go all the way to the end. So like I just show like like the mashup like at the end, like how I finish off these videos. So like see like they're just say like a little. She was saying like a little thank you speech, um, and then at the end I kind of like piece it all together with like it's gonna yeah it's, mm-hmm. it's coming to an end. Organic man, Organ- it's just yeah. it's just organic. It's natural, and it's it's more captivating to watch. Do you see that fade in shot? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes I had a little a couple of those in there. Um, but then after here, like for the dances, I don't really record a lot of people dancing because after a while, it's just kind of like that same thing. So what I do is I, at the end, to finish off these films, I do a compilation of like um, just a mashup, like almost like the highlight reel of like all the dancing and like the mm-hmm. exit. And then my signature thing is that I always add like a blooper or some bloopers at the end. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Whether they're small or big or whatever. And so that's kind of what I do. It should be done here. Oh, that one minute on it. Um but yeah, her, yeah I, I forgot what song they're dancing here. Maybe Kiko can hear it, but um, I don't know. Oh, yep, yep. This is where like the the dancing now starts, and then it, the song picks up. I'm even in the video here. Yep, there you are with Tori. <laughs> I gave the the camera to the photographer. There's Erica from Bridal Glam Group. Um, the parents just get a big like little highlight thing and then throw in title what, what, what camera are you shooting this on it's this is on a c70. c70 look there's the blooper beeps and she says i'm Paige limberg baby and then <laughs> clips and then fun. that's the end of the video fun stuff um yeah, yeah. but so i was just gonna say there is uh, the story I don't know yeah. if you remember this like at our little f- wedding foray together that was uh Oh man, yeah. Total failure. <laughs> that was I mean, we're all just you trying did a to wedding figure together. <laughs> we were all trying so, to like figure something out. Yeah. yeah. So so th- this was pretty early on. So there Very was early. there was a year, maybe a year and a half where with with Bonza, my production company, um at the time, we we I mean, I opened up the separate uh DBA and stuff, just called it Bonza Weddings and I'm I was not really passionate about doing weddings, but I I thought it was something I could like make some cash flow off of, and it would just snowball and, you know, like oh, they will use that to fund the stuff I actually want to do. But at the time, we definitely leaned into that like the cinematic, mm. you know, mm-hmm. wedding That's what was real doing. thing, which was fairly oh, that was fairly the thing. fresh at the time. But uh, yeah, it just didn't work out for me at all. I mean, I I, I think we. The people like the stuff that we delivered, but it, it was just it just mm. wasn't my thing at all. Mm. But the, in, in that season, like there was this point where we 
we kind of jointly did this bridal show together. Yeah. And we were going to try to like, hey, what if we do like photo and video together and we like offer a little discount to incentivize and, you know, we're going to book more that way. Yeah. And, Mm-hmm. We had was, like suits and everything. Yeah, it was oh, it was yeah. a thing. <laughs> yeah, we had like all suits, like with bow ties, and it was funny because I remember like Frank, like just going out of the table, like just hustling, like trying oh, to go. Frank was that yeah. was like when Frank was brand new to town too. Yeah, that, I know. Me and I remember I got I went up to you. And I was like, "Dang, look at this dude!" And he was just like out there, like talking, like real, like a sales dude. Like he went all over the floor, like talking to people. Talk really? about somebody who's not afraid to go and put a mic in someone's face, like yeah. Frank. Yeah, That's, mm-hmm. Frank was really that, out yeah. there. Yeah, maybe Frank. He's, should do a little shift in to this type of wedding film. Yeah. yeah. Might take some market share from you. That's so funny that you are not an outgoing person naturally. I mean, do you think you are naturally and I think just had to build it? I had to build it. I think okay. I, I didn't. I used it like really. I think my wife actually out, unlocked that like out of me because hmm. I feel like before that I was I was very timid. I think that I would only be like outgoing with like my close friends, which mm-hmm. at the time were like my cousins. Uh, you know, we play guitar, we just like hang out and just play video games and that's it. And like, um, but when I met my wife, like I really, um, I re- it really made me push myself. Um, mm-hmm. and she just believed in me, like from the beginning, even from when like, we were just friends, like she just believed in me and like, um, you know, just told me all these encouraging things. Like, you know, you're an artist, like where you should pursue this. Like she just saw the, she just saw what I felt like nobody else saw in me yeah and that was already there i just needed to be like it just needed a little push and like yeah. she did that for yeah. me and then i was like whoa like i guess i am capable I'm, i always yeah. thought i was dumb because i dropped out of school um you know and i just didn't like my english sucks and like all that stuff and like i don't know i just felt like i was never gonna like to like back then like it was funny my my ultimate goal in life was to be a manager at either Beef or Roo or like McDonald's or Chipotle because I worked at Chipotle too. Mm. Um, and that was literally like, that was my, that wow. that was the top of the, the mountain for me. Which, like I uh, truly um, believe that. May I chip in Chipotle? You also uh, got let go for doing something super creative and it was super cool, but yeah. they didn't, they didn't, they didn't it see was, it that it, way. It was Beef or Roo. Oh, yeah. it was Beef or Roo? Yeah, oh, which, which I'm, I'm, I'm cool with it. I'm cool with like, yeah, so uh, first job, <laughs> first job, uh, I got fired from Let's Be For Roo. That was my first job. and got fired from that for being a, a creative, pretty much. Uh, well, not really. No. I mean, I see, you, their, I see, you I see their point. Yeah, I'll, sh- I'll share that story. <laughs> uh, I just recently shared it because actually one of my clients, uh, Glow With Brit, uh, who I'm actually sponsoring. Eh, I guess no yeah. logos in the podcast, yeah. but uh, yeah, I'm repping. I, re- I like to rep like Rockford brands and stuff like that. Um, but like uh, one of her managers was actually one of the owners from Beat For Roo. She do- they're not oh, no owners kidding. anymore, okay, but okay. now like recently we talked about that story and and uh, you know like I got fired and so I mean I mean I was like sixteen years old or yeah, whatever yeah, yeah. seventeen or eighteen I don't know I don't remember how old I was I was probably older no I was like twenty actually because I was when I got married um, but anyways you know I was still mature around that time mm-hmm. and uh, it was closing time and uh, I was I had ordered like a beef and cheddar or some sandwich right for myself to like make it and take it home Mm -hmm. and it was closing time and it was time for me to like uh i was like before i like cover all this these condiments up and whatever to close my section um i was going to um make my sandwich so i uh, there was like i remember the song too there was a song playing and this is like when facebook was barely like you know people were hopping on it it was like the only mm-hmm. cool thing you know i don't even know if instagram was really that hot maybe i wasn't even on instagram then um like 13 years ago or something like that i don't know instagram yeah. maybe it was like only like the true hipsters knew like were on instagram yeah but i wasn't yeah, yeah, yeah. you know um so anyways i was making my sandwich and there was a song by the bgs uh staying alive yeah. Uh, yeah yeah so that was playing and um Always was, in my head, by the way. So yeah, thank so you. I had it's I gonna... had I had gloves on and everything, and I was like just dancing and like making my like sandwich and like I recorded myself on my phone. Um, I, I, was, I can't believe I had a phone that recorded video, but I did. I recorded myself on the phone and or actually it was on my i um app. I don't even know if Apple makes these the the iTouch iPod Touch. Yeah, iPod oh. Touch. It was like <laughs> the first like iPhone looking yeah. like MP3 player or whatever. Yeah. Um. And I recorded myself on that and I was like, just like, you know, like doing all these like moves and like robot and like making the sandwich with like style and everything with the song. And, uh, and, and that yeah, got you and fired. I like, I, yeah, yeah. Well, I, th- I like threw a sandwich and I was like rapping it and like, you know, like doing all this like Michael Jackson moves. And then, uh, 
you know, I didn't think anything of it. You know, put the video away, closed, left home that day. And you I got, posted it? I got home that night, and then I posted it on Facebook. Mm. Uh, I posted it on Facebook, and, um, you know, I was like, I forgot what the caption was. And uh, I was just like having fun or styling and making food or something like that. And then I woke up like at like, I don't know, like, you know, seven in the morning or something to go to work. Because I worked at Chipotle and Beefer at the same time. Mm. Um, and I was doing photography kind of like here and there. Mm-hmm. But uh, I remember waking up and I was like, I had this weird feeling like maybe that wasn't a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, I got on it and like I already had a lot of views. Like this thing was just like go- almost going viral. Uh, oh. No, like like locally viral. <laughs> yeah, 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 and yeah. I was like, oh shoot! And uh, so I took it down immediately. I was like, shoot, no, like I'm gonna take it down. And then um, I went back. I went to work that day, and I remember uh, like everybody was talking about it. And like I was like, oh snap! Like shoot, oh, uh, it's like run. I was just like whatever. And the man, well, like a couple of the managers were like. Thought it was funny and stuff. I don't even know if they saw it. They just heard of it. Because I took it down so early and a lot mm. of people, it was only up at night. So yeah. most of the kids that were up at night till three in the morning playing Halo probably saw it. <laughs> yeah. uh, like me. So then um uh, I remember like the I think I went to work one day, but then the next day I came in like four o'clock and then I was like the manager at the time was like, Hey, can I talk to you for a minute in the dining room? And I was like, uh here it yeah. comes. <laughs> I was like, well, I didn't think I was gonna get fired. I knew I was gonna get like a like a report or like yeah. a written up or kind of yeah. And so like I went and sat down, and there was like both managers. So it was like the day manager and the night manager, uh, or the store store manager or whatever. Mm-hmm. And they sat down, and they're like, "Hey, we heard of like your recent like video you made and all this stuff, and um, you know, uh, we just uh, we're gonna need you to like sign this, and you know, you're gonna be like pretty much like." like don't come to work for like three days whatever like reprimanded like you're off for three days oh, so they took me wow. off the schedule for like three days and i was like i'll take it whatever you know um but i like they got they gave me the report and i remember i was reading it the video was like the, the way they described the video there was like some details in there that i was like that i was like wait a minute i was like did you guys see the video because like these parts right here were like not i did not do any of the stuff in here like I have the video oh, and actually I deleted the video. So I don't even have, I wish I would have kept the actual yeah, video because I would have been great to I play right like, now. you know, uh, but uh, so they, uh, I think they did. They were like, no, we didn't see it, but like we heard of it and like all this stuff and everybody saw it. And I don't know if they said like one of the owners saw it or whatever. Hmm. Uh, I didn't even fight it. I was like, you know what? Three days, whatever. Like I have never, ever gotten in trouble at work ever. Um, as a matter of fact, I was one of the full timers. And at the time, like, they only had like three full timers. So you really had to be like wow. really good to like be get that position. To be honest, like they actually transferred me from the Lexus Beefaroo to the Riverside Beefaroo where I got fired. They transferred mm. me there to make me full time. Mm. So I'm like, why didn't they make somebody here that's been working at the store for a long time full time? I don't know why. But they brought me over, made me full time. So my own theory is that at the time, uh, I probably had some people that I probably weren't too happy that. They would probably were looking for that full time position at that time, mm. um, at, at in that store, and then all of a sudden they bring an this outsider goofing around, and oh. they if, they bring an outsider job. to make them full time that I don't even know the store, which I can see why that could how that could yeah. I could sense it, yeah. and not it was a, a few people. And that's I so was, funny because that's what brands want now. I know. I was gonna <laughs> say like if you do that, like people would pay you to do that today. Yeah, so, yeah, right? I know. That's crazy. Traction. So I was already doing it. I, I was already ahead of my time. So uh, <laughs> anyway, signed it, and then I remember going back. You know, I had two jobs: beef or, or beef or in Chipotle, and I remember going to Chipotle yeah. that morning because I would work from like seven a.m. to three thirty p.m. at Chipotle, and then at, and then I had a half hour. I literally would switch aprons and hats, and then go to beef or from like four to eleven o'clock, and that was my life. Wow. Like every day, wow. every day, every day, every day. Wow. Um, so, um, then I remember working at b and like, it was like man, nine o'clock in the morning. I get a, I get a phone call. I answer it and it's like one of the owners and he's like, Hey, like, Hey, you know, we, after really talking about like your video or whatever, and I don't even think they saw it either. I think they yeah. just heard all this stuff. Yeah, just heard um, the noise. yeah. You yeah, heard the noise and they were like, you know what? Like it's unacceptable. Like, you know, you're just, I remember I can hear it. Like he was mm. like, you're just 
you're, you're terminated. And I was like, dang, like I thought that was like a big word. Like, dang, I felt like I just got like thrown into like the sharks or something. I was like, dang, I was like, like I just got fired. Like I never thought I was going to experience that. And like, you always hear it in like cartoons and like shows like you're fired. Like I was like, dang, terminated. Like I didn't That's even pretty know, crazy. I didn't even know what that word really meant. Cause yeah. I like, you know, I didn't, my English vocab is not the biggest. And so I was like, Oh, okay and like chipotle was already kind of like at the time was like yo like come full-time here and i was like no because mm -hmm. i was making a little bit more money over there and i said if you guys match what i have at b for then i'll come over here full-time <laughs> um and then so quickly like as soon as that happened like i just told my manager like i just got fired so i was like i'll take that offer and she yeah they did make me full-time <laughs> at uh chipotle mm -hmm. um but I got fired for because of the video. for that video. Yeah. By the way, I do remember that video, and there were no health violations uh, committed. Uh, yeah. It yeah. was just a creative yeah. way to make a sandwich. It was a fun video. But <laughs> I get it from a business standpoint. Like, there's a guy, yeah. like an employee. You don't know if it the if restaurant's open because in the back of the kitchen, I'm wearing the logo and I'm like, like playing around yeah. with all this food. And it's like, what if that was like your sandwich? And like, what the heck? What is this? Why is it do like throwing my food around? Yeah. Um, and I so, see. like, I see it from a business standpoint. Yeah. I thought the firing thing was like I. I feel like it could have been like a slap in the hand, like the three days, like okay, that yeah, that, that, that that'll that's sting, crazy. like okay, but that's what happened. Then mm. then uh, then I got fired from Annie Ann's pretzels. I worked at Annie Ann's pretzels <laughs> in the mall, and that one was like weird because like I, I'm actually really good friends with the owner still. Like I like I go and still like she's she's like Louise, and she likes all my kids and. And I, she always says, she's like, Luis, you used to be so crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, and I didn't really do anything, but I was like always just playful. And I don't yeah. I think that she just read it wrong or something. Like I remember mm. coming to work and again, like I just had that playful, like I'll just come in and be like, yo, like what are we doing today? Like making pretzels. And I was like, you know, like rolling them up and like had the music. And I was always <laughs> like, like, you know, that's when I was starting to build my confidence because like mm -hmm. I was I was also like starting to talk to him my friend my wife or that was at the yeah. time and um uh and so yeah like all that like you know i don't know if she just thought i was like i don't know what she thought Not like i never did i was always or something like yeah i think that she thought like i was just immature maybe yeah and then like one day i remember i coming in and i was coming into work and she's like hey buddy she's like i uh i'm just you know i'm gonna have to let you go and i was like Oh, uh, could you okay. use the word terminated? And because then, that's what and then I she's connect like, with. Yeah, you you know, you you just it's just, you're just too much. And, and I was like, <laughs> what? Like what? I'm here every day. Like I'm on time. Like what? Oh, like man. I really didn't do any videos because I learned my lesson. But like I wasn't slacking and or anything. And I was that's like, funny. what the heck? So she's like, no, you're just. She said, oh, you're just too crazy. <laughs> and I was like, okay. So so I, long story short, you're in the freelance world now. Yeah. And you get to fire your clients <laughs> instead of your clients firing you. Yeah. Like, now yes. and now yeah, I get yeah. to do the other thing around. No, yeah. it's Which there's something to be said for that. Like the, the ability to like choose who you work with yeah. on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Like if yeah. you just don't have that that connection with someone or you're just like, this isn't going to be a good vibe. Yeah. You, can, you feel that out and you're like. Is it gonna yeah. be worth the money or not? Yeah, it does. It does. It did take a lot of work, I think, to get. Um, it wasn't an easy road. I made a lot of mistakes. I can. I have bad stories to tell, and um, you know, and lessons learned and stuff like that. Oh yeah. Um, you know, I think one of the things about all creatives and creative business owners is that we do all have this deep down inside of us for a variety of reasons. We have this kind of sometimes it's a self-loathing mm. sometimes it's just a uh no confidence in what you do yeah. and kind of what you provide the value you provide to your clients you know so, and we're very hard on ourselves yeah that's a common theme our, i think throughout. our own worst critic yeah absolutely that i know true. it's 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 definitely i see it in me and i've i've seen it in uh some of my cl close friends and whatever it is that kind of allows you to gain that confidence. But I think one of those things is a good woman, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. from the people I've heard that are married. Yeah. Legit. They'll what, if, what if you're a woman? Oh, vice and, versa. OK. You know, yeah. it's just you having somebody <laughs> that believes in you like yeah. that to take that risk. Yeah. To buy that four hundred dollar camera. Yeah. You know, to then constantly encourage and and build you up instead of yeah. tearing you down and um, supporting you along the way and doing everything she or he can to, you know, to help build that confidence and yeah. grow you. And it comes out in 
vis- in very visible ways, but then it also comes out in ways like becoming more talkative and outgoing. You know, yeah. something that you didn't think you were up until you were married and your wife was, you know, constantly mm-hmm. pushing you and, and kind of uplifting yeah. you. And just, I mean, I've, I know I've heard the same thing from you and your wife. Oh, it's, absolutely. It's just, uh, that's the importance of, well, number one, marrying the right person, right? Yeah. But right. then also surrounding yourself yeah, with well, I was going to say, people. I think it, tri- it, it ties right. in that idea of what we were talking about with Frank, like finding your tribe. Yes. Okay. Yeah. But yes. Pe- people that believe in you. I mean, yeah. obviously your spouse is like the, sh- hopefully is the number one person who believes in you. Yeah. And if it's not, I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a tough road you know, yeah. to go down. But and I, and it, I would say either way, you need to find somebody who can encourage you and not be like, oh, get a real job. You know? Well, and yes. that's, that's the cool thing about... In the like, hard times, too. Yeah. You know? City stage. Like, that's that's like... <laughs> A, like a the, like a newer phase um for me in this and it, it, it has played a big part in like where i'm headed to with you know my career or journey as a creative professional mm-hmm. um being around here like city stage has I, I don't think that i would be where i'm at with even my just my video work and everything that i've done like if it wasn't for like josiah bringing me in here with like uh with like the community here because i think truly like well like like the idea of like bringing all these creatives here and having this space where we can like live and share ideas and grow together and mm-hmm. understand like because like you said I feel like we are like it's almost like we're like a different species like we just think <laughs> yeah. different yeah yeah that's tough like we just think different we I don't know it's just like it's hard to explain sometimes these things um, it's hard to relate to yeah. the emotions I e- think, even sometimes you know? honestly like. I, I know my wife like believes in me a lot, but sometimes we do have a little bit of conflict in that sense of like, like, and the cool thing is that she, uh, it, she trusts me. Eventually she's like, even though this makes me feel uncomfortable, like the way, like the, you maybe are approaching the situation or like whatever next steps you're going to make for this or your career. Like mm-hmm. I like, I'm trusting you because you've come through, you know, before, yeah. or I know you're going to put in your best or you're, you're smart about it. And obviously I've grown with experience, but like, um, we, you know, we're, we're different. Like I can tell you guys something and like, you, you'd be like, Oh yeah, for sure. Like do that. I like that makes that. sense. You know, I know like, that mindset, you know, you know, and it's like, process. I felt that like, I know where it's at. We're like, you know, this month has been like weak, man. Like, I don't know. Like, I think people sometimes see our Instagrams too. And here's another thing too. Like one of the biggest things is like, sometimes people, if you look, it really is funny because I kind of become like a lot, like I make all my money off of Instagram. Like that's where, I, um, but it's as a I, promotion tool. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's, a, yep. it's a tool. Social media for me is a tool. Um, but the funny thing is, I I don't even if you look if you really just look at my posts, like I don't I re- like the I've never seen 150 likes on my post on Instagram, and I just posted like a recent profile picture. Who shout out was taken by Nikki um, Kate Photography, and she does amazing work, and I love her style. So um, I feel like it's similar to where I kind of lean in the warmer tones and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so she she did my portraits for like my brand and stuff like that, and. Uh, that got like I was like I've never seen even a hundred likes on my stuff and like sometimes I post something like this weekend and got like three likes and like but mm-hmm. I started like one of the things that I really got me ahead of everything is not the fo- I don't look at the followers anymore I don't look at the likes to me it's a tool because I don't I'm I for some reason I just like I don't believe anymore in the followers and I feel like I don't know like personally my own opinion is like I just feel like those are numbers that we just like we base our like our success on those yeah. numbers and it's like i know for a fact i know people that have like 30 or even almost a million followers um that are not even barely getting any jobs or even jobs that pay as much as some of the jobs that i've even gotten they're just small jobs and i'm yeah. like what do you like what's up with all the followers like is that like what is it then are, so are you doing work for um are you doing work for like or is, if you're a photographer are you shooting for other photographers to praise you in or are you shooting for the client yeah. are you mm-hmm. shooting to have a cinematic look in video because you want to look cool for the other photographers or are you getting those moments that are f- you are you shooting for your couple you know what's important to them it's their family the whole reason why you have a wedding is to celebrate you guys coming together with your friends and family that that is you don't need my father-in-law told me this he's like a long time ago and it's always stuck with me it's like you don't you don't need a like a wedding is a luxury. You don't need a wedding to get married. You can literally go to the courthouse if you want to get married legally and do that and go get a house and your husband and wife and you can happily ever after. And, you know, you don't have to have a wedding. Um, but that's just something that like we like to do. And it's a big celebration. It's a party. Um, 
so yeah, I mean, I don't, I think that uh, sometimes we get lost in that, like trying to like, even though part of it, yes, there is a part of like this stuff like has to look appealing and, and cool up to a certain level or whatever to catch the audience. But like the follower thing, it's like, I've been stuck at like 6,000, whatever followers I have now for like years. It's just set there. Like I go up like 300, I drop like 150 and like, I just stop paying attention to those. I just keep posting and I don't mm -hmm. care. I just but post. the reality is like what you hit on is I, I also, you know, personally know people with a huge following that struggle to get work sometimes, you know, and it's, it's the numbers are part of it. And that might be what businesses look at, you know, yeah. to vet like how good you are at social media or something. Yeah. But the reality is like, you can have a small following that's, I would rather have a small targeted following that's really engaged with what I'm doing than a massive yeah. following that just yeah doesn't like need any work like, essentially like teenagers <laughs> or whatever they're not gonna yeah. pay for yeah. your stuff like they don't have money like, yeah yeah you know it's like no I want my business people to like follow me because they're the ones that are gonna pay me for the stuff mm -hmm. they're the ones mm -hmm. that are gonna value um, me and everything like that and so um, yeah but it's it throughout that whole hard work with what you were saying uh, Josiah it's like. It does. It does feel rewarding now to get be at the spot where you can kind of pick and choose your battles and to be confident with that and to really and obviously that comes with like knowledge in your market, like knowing mm -hmm. where your value is and knowing what yeah. everybody else is doing and being super confident and be like, here's my price and uh, this is what I can offer. You know your value. And if they don't like it or want to like, OK, well, then, yeah go ahead and look around and then come back, you know, if you, but I can't guarantee that I'm going to be open then. Um, yeah. And so I take a weird sense of pleasure in saying no to, work yeah. Or, yeah, or there like, is, there is, or a, just there like is. having the confidence to be like, yeah, it is like, I mean, it, it is. is what it is. I actually, I, I, I'm not going to beg you right to work with me. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It does. No, I, mm -hmm. I agree with that. And, call it pride, call it whatever, but it's like, it feels good to be like, no, like, yeah, I do handheld work and this is my work and people pay me and then mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm sorry, like I'm not um, going to do that. But here's another but thing. But it's just being confident in that as well. It, it is. Because you and, do know what you can still offer. And, and the, the thing too, I, I will say this, and uh, I, I think this is probably a good point that I did want to at least put in the podcast, but like, uh, I, I, want, I do want to say that like, when any any photographer, I think, and then I, I, I think I speak for all of them in videographers in the wedding industry, uh, when we do go about shooting your wedding, um, we do truly like we truly care, like invest uh, yeah. unless you're in it just to try to make money or and they really care much. And usually those don't last when people ask me, like, how do I get into weddings or like. I, the first thing I always tell them, do you want, why do you want to get into weddings? Is it because you just want to make money or you heard that it's easy to make money or do you really genuinely like like celebrating weddings because it's a lot of work and if you you're just doing it just to get money you're gonna hate it like it's just yeah. not gonna work out yeah. and you're gonna get burnt out very fast probably like in the first couple weddings honestly like I don't I mm -hmm. just don't see it it's a lot of work it is and if you don't enjoy it then especially um, if you're booked up like you have been for yeah you know the last mm -hmm. eight years whatever yep. it's been yep every weekend yeah you're gone yeah you're working yeah and it's been getting harder so um I'm trying to um, reduce the amount of weddings I'm taking in and pursuing more. I felt like my whole like career and I'm just like it, it could be like an early midlife crisis, but I feel like I just like my whole career as a creative, like I've been always like shooting for other people and like making their content look cool. But I've never like did anything for myself. Like hmm. I never filmed myself or like I want to do this video the way I want it and like this mm -hmm. is what it like just for me. So yeah, that's where the whole YouTube thing is coming in where I, I just film things that I want to see. I don't care if I get one view. I'm just putting it. I'm just going to put these videos out there because it's my like I finally want to do something for myself before I get too old um, and hoping to like through people getting to know me a little bit more on my creative side as Louise that that will also help like maybe push maybe even you know, want people to book me more on this side. Like we like, like to see the other side of Luis too, like where he's just doing his own. What is Luis about? And I just feel like I've been like, I, like, I feel like when people see me, like, do you guys think of weddings when you see me? Like, is that the main thing or are you, you not? Well, you met me a little bit later. Creative. But do you think of me when you say like, Luis, like does weddings come to you? Like he's a wedding guy. I'd say it used to. 
I'd say lifestyle. But I think. I, yeah, recently it has sh- no. It definitely shifted in recent Which, years. Yeah, that's see, that's really like encouraging for me to hear because that's what I'm working on. I'm working on yeah. people not fully. Well, I, so er, I mean, I've I've known you for a long, right? As long as you've been in photography, yeah. So uh, I, yeah, I've seen like a, a change. I mean, it was early on. I think like you were still just trying to figure it out. Like you you liked the lifestyle stuff, like the yeah. American Eagle vibe, and I yep. remember that. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. And like did some stylized shoots and looked cool. And then you just really seem to settle into this vein of weddings, and you just yeah. mastered that. So yeah. like, yeah, Luis was the wedding, but you know, I mean, you still did great weddings. But like, yeah. that, that's what I knew you as. And, but now it's like, I think you've come into this season where you're just more of a general, creative-minded person. Yeah, that's good at a broader range of things, and it's not just weddings. Yeah, yeah. And that's what I I want. Like, I I don't think I'll fully drop weddings anytime soon, but I definitely would like to. Um, re- 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 Kiko re- just gave us a signal that we hit the two hour mark. We're at two <laughs> hours. I was like, this man. is the longest podcast we've had. Okay, um, but off, I do want to. I, w- I want to ask stuff. you, what's that? I said all good stuff. By the way, really oh. good stuff. Yeah, oh, yeah. Francisco's like. <laughs> more, more, I, I noticed more. you haven't cut yourself at all, or I haven't noticed you cut yourself. I, I feel like we need I'll, to. Sh- I cut to a map. Show that you're yeah, actually oh, in he, the booth. Uh, yeah, yeah. He'll, he'll cut Victor's him. Victor's got me. Okay, he'll, I, he'll insert you. This stuff, I love this stuff. Like whether you're recording <laughs> yeah. or not, like I could literally I sit mean, here. See? You got me. Victor, there he is. Right? Yeah. There, there he is. He's actually in the booth today. There he is. There he is. No, dude. This is this is the point of the podcast. You know, we have. I've said this on probably every episode we've had so far is like we have so many amazing conversations with people here in in the studio stopping by. Um, And, you know, sometimes even out in the field. I mean, with some of our crew, we literally just sat in a hot tub at a hotel (laughs) overnight. I I thought we were agreeing to just leave that uh, in the hot tub. (laughs) (laughs) But. Just, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa. They, oh man. <laughs> it was just it was just good conversation and and it's not even if it's not like industry related it's just um there were fries involved there were French fries, fries um cheesecake, cheesecake. <laughs> wow <laughs> the fries were in <laughs> oh, oh wow <laughs> wow the fries were in the pool and i it kept floating towards me no, it was a fun night. But no, these are the conversations that we have um, outside. You know, like you and I have sat down, all three of us yeah. have sat down and had um, really good things. There's going to be like rumors going around now that, you know. <laughs> oh my God. <goodness>. Yeah. <laughs> well, and it's like when we have moments like this, it's like sometimes I don't want to let go. That's why I'm like, I don't like, do we have to stop? Because like. <laughs> Let's make oh, it a four hour well, pod. Well, yeah. and the thing is like, we, we, we keep like after here, like. What's going to happen? Like, I'm probably have like a bunch of emails. I have a meeting at seven o'clock and it's like, it's like I go back to it again. I'm like, and that's like, like, these are the moments where I feel like I pause. I get to like Mm -hmm. relax and just like whether it's venting or just talking about what we do and being able to like, you know. Well, so here's the other side of the, the coin that I think in the first episode, Joe and I talked about why we're you know what city stage kind of has to offer to the community and also what the podcast is going to offer and that is that we are so often even though we're busy and we're around people sometimes and you more so because you know you're doing social you're doing photography you're doing uh, wedding videos we do become a little isolated Mm. you know in our own either if it's physically in our own office or whatever it is but then also in our mind you become so isolated in your thinking and mm-hmm. what you have to get done next yeah. and then to take a pause and to have good authentic conversation and open up to to um you know other um creatives or you know people you work with um that's 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 what i love about doing this podcast is you know we make no money we lose money and we lose a lot of time mm-hmm. if you want to be a sponsor of this podcast let us know we'll Definitely. Put your money to good use. <laughs> <laughs> but you can also be like really surrounded by people all the time and still be very exactly. lon- lonely because yeah. you're not having like a <clears throat> a conversation with someone who understands you. Like you're just mm-hmm. you're in business mode. Uh, yeah. You're, mm-hmm. you're not probably yeah. like having these deep conversations with your social media clients, you know? It's yeah. 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 And you're not, taking that, but it's you're yeah. not taking that step back and just to, you know, think about things you know think about your childhood why you started what you're doing you know Mm -hmm. and and we were talking with neil um also it's just like when we first started out we all wanted to do films and then you get into commercial work and at some point you're just making money you're you you like what you're doing you know every job is like a mini film right Mm -hmm. but you lose track of the that ambition to 
produce actual films, produce narrative content, and yeah. and to make that extra time, you know, even though we you have families and you know you have extra responsibilities, uh, whatever it is, but to take a step back and to kind of look at it from a broader perspective yeah. and think, okay, this is where I have been, and then this is where I'm going. I think is a really important underestimated thing, especially with creatives, because we can just get so head down in the trenches, move, 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 make money, 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 mm -hmm. connect, connect, connect. And it's not really connecting. It's not really um, what, what, you know, what we hope to do in the future. Um, and that's why I think the community here is it's important to have people that you can have those conversations with and kind of like re um, regroup yourself in a way mentally, you know, um, Josiah has been in in studio build out for three years, mm -hmm. you know, and that is a huge undertaking. I mean, it's a, it's a beautiful, great space, but it took a lot of time. It took a lot of effort. And I think, you know, I was just telling you a couple of weeks ago, it's like you're in a new phase. You're in a yeah. you're in a yeah. completely new phase. The studio build out is behind you. Now it's time to move on to a different um, stage kind of mm -hmm. so not to make this a long rant but it's it's just so important to have these types of conversations um, you know in a po in a podcast but then also outside just take that yeah. moment just take that 30 minutes yeah, whatever have, it is having having real conversations with people who care and understand yeah. you right? yeah it just brought to mind when we were talking about just having people who kind of yeah understand you, know, you can sit down talk shop with and understand you like I remember do you remember Volok yeah, Val. Yeah, to Karchuk. Yeah, he was actually one of my like when I first early started, inspirations. Yeah, yeah he yeah, was yeah. one of my early inspirations. Yeah, yeah. Good dude, buddy of mine, um, from Belarus actually. Oh so, yeah, kind of up in your neck of the woods, but <laughs> kind of. Uh, good, good buddy of mine. Uh, he was in photography you know, early on when I was getting started in in production work, and uh, I remember we kind of had this. Uh, we would just meet up, like, and talk shop essentially, mm -hmm. and he, and that's kind of like. That's what it was. Like we we would just meet up during business hours and talk shop about you know whatever, mm -hmm. and like we had the ability to do that because we were both both kind of creative freelance sort of people mm -hmm. at the time. And yeah, I remember like he ended up moving to Kansas City, and yeah, you know, I mean I'm not holding a grudge again him or anything, <laughs> but like I was sad. I was sad that he left. You yeah. Know, not only that he was my friend, but like you know he was someone that I felt like connected with. Like he was mm -hmm. going through the same creative struggles. Of like trying to grow this business from nothing, you know, into yeah. into something, and I was in the same boat. But like, there was something special about being able to just, uh, you know, chat with him, and and he and we would bounce ideas off each other and stuff. And it wasn't like, and and this is not to like just you know talk about talk everybody else down who's in maybe the nine to five world or the you know in different industries. But there's there's this kind of this common thread where people are like, well, why don't you just go get a real job? And, and they just don't understand, yeah. you know, the the mindset and like mm -hmm. why we're why we're in this to begin with. So yeah. that's a bit of a ranty no. way to say that. Yeah, it is like it's good to have talk to people who who can understand you and call you up. And yeah. mm -hmm. Oh, I mean, like I said, and then I'll say it again, like the City Stage Studios and not not just the space. Like I'm talking about the family, the here, community, yeah. the community. Is was really like I don't think that I would I would have been as successful or even maybe even unlocked those like things that I had like though for example like the documentary with the weddings like I started really getting into like like learning filmmaking through like Josiah and being here like meeting all you guys and seeing I've never seen what a production I didn't know what an AC was or a PA or a grip or even a gaffer like I didn't know any of this stuff like I've I'm only like a year into this stuff and like I've learned so much just being here. In the community and just even people that have just visited here and used the photo studio like how much it's built and connected everything like i it i think that this place has truly um i'm starting to see like where it's starting to become the what we what the original mission is is like the hub for rockford creatives like a home here for rockford creatives whether mm -hmm. you're in music whether you're in podcasting youtubing makeup everything i mean it's, it's and, I, awesome. and i wanted to clarify like just because it seems to be a common theme we're coming back to on a few of these podcasts. But yeah. if you've listened this long and you've heard us talking about <laughs> this and the, the community aspect of it, we're not just talking about, like, having mm -hmm. an office here. Although mm -hmm. uh, we are, we do have, like, a new hot desk membership option where you can just kind of come in and yeah. whoever's free for the day. If you're interested in that, 
reach out. But it's it's more about the idea of just, uh, yeah, it's the community around the place. It's like you don't necessarily have to be here day to day, but like we're, we're going to be continuing to, to put on events that are, you know, just really centered around providing community for creative professionals. And, you know, w- there's we have no horse in the race in this. And this, yeah. this, that's not the reason we're doing it. It's like to, to make money off of, you know, it or whatever. It's just like it's 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 a place for us to have a common thing to talk about and kind of a support network in a way. Yeah. And it just happens to be around the studio. Uh, here. And Josiah, you've all, you've had this vision to make Rockford a go-to place for production. Yeah, like a destination and filmmaking city is like exa- part, part of the yeah. grand yeah. vision yeah. for it. And yeah. th- I hear this from, you know, we we just sat in a couple meetings last week and just figuring out how to make that happen, right? And nobody, I've heard nobody say it in a way where it's just for them. It It really is for the community. You know, it, when we do make Rockford the go-to place for production, for c- the creative arts, everybody's going to benefit. And that's our goal. And that's why I love being a part of the community. Because it's a team sport, you know? We're it not- is. You need so many different roles, in especially in video production. You need so many different people, so many different talents, and you need to organize those people and all of them work together. And that when we talk about the community here, it's not just the small cluster of people that are in the offices. No, it's people outside of even, you know, on the outskirts of Chicago. It's people on the outskirts of Milwaukee or in Milwaukee and Chicago. It's all we need is just the central place where people can come together. And you've built that and getting come together. together. Yeah. yeah. And it sounds like a cliche, but it really is um, just kind of mecca <laughs> I, I i picture it as just a place to come in and and make that stuff happen but the community isn't isn't solely just the people here with memberships yeah. it's it, that's and, not and the even purpose like at all outside of like obviously you need a crew to do like a like a production production but like even, yeah. even as like a running gun guy like you're still mm-hmm. part of a you know it's still it's not just you like you're working with a photographer on some of these things you're mm-hmm. working with yeah. some social media person or like it's it's a community of people yeah and i never understood Creative really way. until i came here how beneficial it is to know so many of those people because we do trade i mean i said this on a other podcast too is we trade work back and forth all the time you know um it's it's a whole web of business being done and that's as a result of being connected and and having that community um Luis, back to you. <laughs> oh, no, <it's> good. <laughs> now that we're, good. we're done ranting, um, <laughs> where do you see the future of kind of? Because I know I've heard I've I've not been here. You know, I've only been here two years, and it seems like the photographer community was a little bit fragmented before, and um, I think that's becoming less fragmented, and more photographers are working together and, and exchanging work, exchanging ideas. Yeah. Where do you see that? I mean, I guess, can you give me an overview if that was the case, and then where do you think it's headed? Less catty. <laughs> I think the cattiness, uh, cattiness or fighting, or not fighting, I don't like to throw that out there, but, like, uh, it, it's it's kind of, it's reduced. I don't see it. I, it's not, I don't, I wouldn't say that. And from what I'm seeing, like, I wouldn't say it's like fully gone. It's weird. And this is something that we I've talked to Josiah about too. And I think Francisco, we've talked about this too, but like, it's weird. Like coming from like, this is why I, I removed myself from any, uh, that's another thing too about me. Like I'm, I w- not in any photographer group at all. Like never, like I was mm. always just my own thing. I, you, I did at the, be- like at the, I think at the beginning when like you first met me, uh, so you know, you're new, you're trying to c- communicate and stuff like that. I quickly learned that like, it sadly was not helping me at all. And well, all it wasn't. It wasn't community. It, it was just it, kind of toxicity. Yeah, it, it was, was super like, toxic. My like, photos are more artsy yeah. than yours. Like, mm. and like, cr- like just hard critique on photos and like all this. But like, it's just it was just bad. So yeah. you I clearly immediate- don't know anything about photography. You don't even know what aperture you shot. That right. Thing. Just stupid. Yeah, yeah it's really <laughs> dumb My stuff. My camera is better than yours. Yeah. yeah. Or yeah. Like, well, I'm like, a better photographer. So then um, I removed myself. And the minute I did that, like, I literally, like, that's when I took off because mm. I was not focused on what other photographers, and this is what we talked about again. Like, are you shooting for your photographer friends or to impress them, or are you really shooting for the client? Because, mm. I, you know, who cares about this photo in the mountains? Like, yeah, I the mountains are cool and all, but, like, what about the photo of, like, the 96-year-old grandma that made it to the wedding? 
that is crying that you just went and hugged by the by the guest table and yeah, it's beautiful. just a straight flash shot and it's like i'm can almost guarantee you that that couple is gonna if they had to sh- pick like hey you can only keep one photo is this one with the straight flash like there's napkins and stuff on the table but i'm hugging grandma or us like in a magical like backdrop of mountains and i would hope so and i would think that they would want to pick the one with the grandma yeah yeah so um but the going into the video community like that's something that even that i just learned that i was like everybody and maybe it's just because of how production and video works but like it's, it's very less team. individualistic. It's, no, yeah. it, and like you expect it to be a team thing. Like yeah. you just expect it. Like everybody just works together. And like how I was surprised of because obviously I have to start from square one again. Like, you know, getting to know people in the video world and like, hey, well, what are you shooting with? And like, hey, can you help me? Like, what is this? What is that? And like everybody was just so open. I mean, you were so open. You were so open. Like everybody was just here. Colin, like how many times I just went into his office and like he's probably like, dang comes again like i'm not gonna get any work done <laughs> and like but i just ask questions i just i was like that little kid again just mm-hmm. asking questions asking questions, asking questions asking yeah. questions asking questions and like you know aaron and robert constantly even, even them like you know uh, everybody like i'm just yeah. getting all this knowledge from everybody um but everybody was just so open to helping out and like th- i think that's why like i was able to grow as fast like i actually surprised myself like i'm not gonna lie because like um I had given myself like a three year um, to be where I want to be with video. And now I think I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm like 80% there already, like mm-hmm. in only a year of me yeah. doing this stuff. And, and you've been hustling and as well. I've been hustling this, hard, yeah. hard. Cause I don't, I feel like I said, the whole like midnight, that's, I feel like at this, is, I've go, been going through like this, like early, like almost like midlife crisis. Like I'm seeing like the newer, younger photographers, newer style come in and, Along with that, like the whole cadence, like or whatever, like most photographers are starting to do this like associate thing now. It's like, hey, like, uh, you know, you are Victor Photography, but let's say you're booking a lot of weddings and you might be booked for one day. Now you're starting to get like associates under you. And that's like a more like newer thing, too, which is really cool because now they're all like working together and stuff like that. Yeah. I still get a feeling sometimes of that, like. I don't know. I think it's because photography is one of those like lone wolves kind of like type of well, you can like do it by yourself. Like yeah, it's a you it, you, yeah. You can just be a photographer by yourself, but like with video, like it does require unless you're kind of running on. But even with me, sometimes it's nice. It would be nice to have somebody helping me set up like a light or like mm-hmm. just like helping me, you know. And just the um, collaboration, the collaboration, and all that. That's stuff. where the magic happens. Yeah. yeah, but this whole like in this whole stage I'm in right now, it's like I'm starting to like. I'm starting to feel like I need to, like you said, I need to make a move now because uh, before I like get faced off, you know, and I do feel like City Stage Studios has been like a great, like just a big, big part of that success for me because of the community, because of all the knowledge, not just creatively, but like even just a friend and like a family support. Like I feel like I can, I mean, when we went to Vegas, like, Mm -hmm. like, Literally, like we were just sitting there, like what twelve midnight or whatever in the morning or whatever, however yeah, late after. it was. I don't know. It was like the after hours, and like just to be able to be open and like let your feelings like feel and like mm-hmm. just be like be out there, you know, just like just be like let loose and just like mm-hmm. express yourself. Not even talking about we, video we do or charge for these therapy sessions though. Yeah, we're talking about the, yeah. and it's cool because we can understand each other <laughs> in that yeah. sense of like both like the friend, like outside of the creative mind, but then also combine that with, you know, our creative journeys and wherever yeah. we're at. And it's like, it feels so good to have that. And I think it's very important to in, in anybody's career. So um, if you're out there and you're starting out and uh, you know, I would say ask a lot of questions and build community quickly and just keep asking questions. There's a lot of great people out there. Yeah. I see myself and I feel like, I mean, it's cool because, like, I remember you doing all these productions and now you have moved almost into, like, the guy that brings productions and kind of organizes people in more of a, like, a, I would say even, like, a mentor, honestly. And so I feel the same way. Like, I'm, I am I want to move into a place where I want to start inviting the newer photographers into City Stage and teaching them, like, creativity and, like, the 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 realistic things, too, of, like, even the... the um like the the real problems that you're going to face out there. Sometimes mm-hmm. people think like 
the pretty pictures are gonna like get you bookings, but that's not true. Like, gotta have the business side. You yeah, gotta have you gotta have a business. Sometimes people have asked me like, do you think did you go to like photography school for that? Do you have a degree? I'm like, I don't. Uh, and they're like, do you think I should go to college for this? And I'm like, if you really, I think if you really want to go to school, and I don't have anything against school or getting a degree or whatever. Um, it wasn't for me, but uh, if you are, I think that I would vote for anybody to just go get like general like business how to yeah, run a business like, entrepreneurship yeah mm-hmm. business like how to run a business uh or sales or something like that because marketing all that stuff because that you can apply to anything that you're going to do i used to say i'm never going to be a sales guy but that's that's what we do i mean you no matter what you do you still have to sell yourself um, yeah pretty pictures are not going to pay the bills so. right right I think we do need to bring this into no, the landing. No, and I'm, yeah. yep, I'm so. going to, uh, I want to say this about the community, is that if there's hostility or, like, cattiness, whatever it is, I guarantee you once, well, maybe I sh- maybe this is entirely is correct. Is this a money-back guarantee? Or uh, no, because I think if you actually meet that person that you're in competition with, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, you do video. Yeah, I do video. Exactly, we all do. You know, we all do. Joe Gaff, mm-hmm. you know that we are in competition to a certain extent. Ex- of course, but I know mm-hmm. you, right. and if you get a job, I just go. Yeah, more power to you. Yeah, great, Luis mm-hmm. got it. Mm-hmm. There's really n- absolutely no mm-hmm. like. Um, what would be the word? There's no me thinking resentment or yeah, resentment. Like that. Thank like, you. That's yeah. the word I'm looking for. There's yeah, like, absolutely no resentment. And that's the beautiful thing about connecting. You, 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 once you know that person and you know, th- you know, about their family, you know about them, who they are, that they don't have any ill will towards you, you're not going to, I mean, if you do, <laughs> you probably should be working on yourself to change yeah. that. Mm-hmm. But that's the importance of community is once you get to know those individuals, know who they are, you're not going to have that, yeah. you know. You, you just won't. Um, so to wrap it all up, um, guys, we are excited about the community here uh, in Rockford. We really would love to have you guys stop by, check out the space, and meet the lovely, amazing people here, one of which could be Luis himself. Mm. Um, brother, thank you so much for jumping on the podcast with us. This was really fun. It did not feel like two hours. I think we're over the two-hour mark. I so, know. It's crazy. Um, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Always great conversation with you. Guys, please do subscribe to the City Stage podcast on Instagram, where you'll see a lot of, a lot of our shorts. Mm-hmm. City Stage and Friends, I believe, is the handle? Yeah. City Stage podcast. Oh, is it? I okay. Wait, yeah, you're, you're right. supposed to know. Oh man, I was saying friends the whole time. Whatever. City, City stage, stage podcast. podcast. Yeah, because yeah. we podcast. the handle, the, handle we, we grabbed. the handle was weird. If we did it any yeah, other way, it just yeah. didn't look good. So uh, subscribe to the Instagram City Stage podcast and on YouTube at City Stage where we have the full episodes. Uh, thank you so much for watching, guys. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye bye. Peace.